heart is used to trivializing you and all you are but Lord tonight we truly confess that you are everything please don't mind our pride we act as though we can do without you the truth is we cannot do without you whether we admit it or not it is the truth for no man no man can do anything against the truth but for the truth Lord Jesus tonight we thank you for the things you are about to do but Lord our focus tonight first and foremost is our hearts there are people thousands of people scattered across this arena and several others following from different nations of the world Lord please take our hearts please take our hearts we are wasting our time if we do not hand our hearts over to you hallelujah I'm hearing a song in my spirit what can days where people just cajole people you know when people come like this I know many of you have heard of the miracles many of you will experience it God wants us to experience it but let me tell you this I have noticed that most of those who live long are not miracle workers in fact most healing evangelists did not cross 80 
those who really really enjoyed the grace for longevity are people who are interested in the souls of people hallelujah now nothing wrong with miracles we're going to be experiencing the hand of god shortly but it came strong upon i've been concerned about the fact that there are people who are really going to hell it's not a lie it's true whether you believe it or not it's not the issue i can argue that there's no oxygen in the air it does not stop it there are some of you looking at me right now the overflow the truth of the matter is that at your current state without missing words it is true that it is not heaven you are going to The goal is not to scare you. This is not the issue of scaring. It's, it's the truth. There's nothing to scare you about. It is true. And books were opened. And another book was opened, which was the book of life. Listen carefully. Whosoever's name. It's on earth yet that we celebrate people, Apostle Joshua Selman. Whosoever's name was not found. He was not asked why his name was not there. If your name was not there, that's the end of it. Are we together? Listen, look, this is a very serious, serious issue. There has to come a time in a man's life when you break your pride and say, Jesus, I need you. I don't care whether you have been a preacher for donkey years. I'm not asking you how many sick bodies you killed. I'm not asking you what name your members call you. Are we together? There are people outside overflow one, two, three. The truth is there are people who need Jesus Christ. And a day is going to come, whether we like it or not, that day, the very judge of the earth is coming. It's coming. If he said it in his word, then it is true. Mm -hmm. Come out and be serious with God. Be serious with God. It's amazing how people come out for altar call. They come out for altar call and you see them playing around and you know they are not serious. I'm not saying you must cry, but there is an attitude of seriousness. You don't play games with God. Are we together? I want you to run to Jesus like there's fire on the mountain because there really is. One. Two. Apostle, I'm ready to break my pride and humble myself. It's not a call to condemnation. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, make your way. I've cried for my own life. My own life as a man of God. I've cried and rolled in the presence of God, crying for my own life. So don't, don't think that this is just some showmanship. Three, make your way. It's not by force. It's not compulsory. You can choose to sit down. Or you can choose to say let tonight be that night lord you have to win this war over my life four the holy spirit is still speaking to people you may have money you may have anointing you may have cars but let me tell you this the bible says if your hope is only in this life you are of all men of all politicians, of all businessmen, of all men of God, miserable. There has to be a cry from your heart. Lord, I need you is a sign of humility. Is there someone still joining them? Very quickly, I want to pray. Your coming to Jesus means I am ready to close the door to all the friends and personalities in my life that are not ready to head my direction. Your coming to Jesus is a revelation that Lord, I am ready to be serious with you. It's not just you are coming as a preamble to receiving a miracle and then you run back. No. In plenty and in none, leaving you is no longer an option in my life. Hallelujah. I want to lead you. Some of you are crying. Let me tell you this. If you have any loved one who is not saved, I hope their names are in your prayer request. Because I know that some of us, if I ask you what is on your prayer request now, the only thing is wife, husband, 
promotion and, and there's nothing wrong with that but let me tell you this it's, it's funny but from heaven you will still see your loved ones in hell you will know they are the ones it's not that you are going to look at them and say I don't know I don't it's a lie you will know that this one is my mother this one now you can't do anything about those who have gone but there are people now you know in your neighborhood around your life it is the Lord's desire that all men be saved please if you are a pastor here take the issue of soul winning seriously be careful all these things we learn around in the name of mentorship I believe in be careful many people are veering off there is a there is a path that brings power and grace at the end of your life you don't want to be a wise master builder be, be careful the flamboyant does not necessarily mean God is there be careful especially for some of us who are younger ministers we must be wise you don't just swallow everything hook line and sinker just because it is being done no sir no sir no sir no sir there are churches where an altar call is not made for more than two years then one day they organize one hilarious pretentious revival and then just draw one or two people it's a joke it's a joke more than healing more than miracles more than getting a job more than all of this is the eternal destiny of men i am interested in knowing that i'm not praying for someone going to hell it's a waste i'm interested in knowing that i'm not teaching someone a principle to prosper when he's already gone to hell it's a waste I will teach you about the finances and the kingdom life when we know that your eternal destiny is secure. Those of us who are standing, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, just one prayer before I pray for them. Lord, make me serious with you. Make me serious with you. Please pray. It's a very serious prayer. There are some of us, you are not going to hell. But the truth of the matter is you are not serious with God. No. Mm -mm. There's nothing about God that, that can steal your passion. It's not priority. You see people function in the house of God and you say, oh, these ones, it's because they are called into ministry. There's no such thing as that. It's your hunger. Especially for some of us sisters, we have to pray. Lord, make me serious with you. I don't care how many men like you. I don't care what they have told you. If you are not serious with God, your life is in shambles. It's true. Lord, make me serious with you. Let nothing else sustain the ability to take your place in my life. That's a very good prayer. Hallelujah. Come live in me Oh my life Take over Come live in me and I will rise Hallelujah. You are a parent here. Yeah? When your children get to the age of discretion, the moment they can think and they can understand, lead them to Jesus consciously. It is very responsible. Lead them to Jesus. If you have not done so as you go back home, don't just say my children are smart. Call them. Preach the gospel to them. The moment they, are, they can think, they should be born again. Please, be, take, 
let nobody stay in your roof you have a neighbor that is squatting with you he's not serious it doesn't matter no it does no it does no it does they can choose to reject jesus that's all right no one goes to hell because he's a sinner everybody goes to hell because he rejected jesus that is the sin that takes men to hell i rejected him i had a choice but i rejected him jesus carry your load and walk out of my life those of you in front here i truly appreciate you whatever you have in this life if jesus is not above it is useless let me just tell you the truth i want to lead you in an honest prayer i know some of you are crying overflow one two three those online please listen i'm not asking you whether you're a business mogul i'm not asking you whether you have how many degrees all those things are useless when you are no longer here i'm going to lead you in an honest prayer and i want you to pray from the depth of your heart listen to what you are saying and pray it loud are you ready now say after me with all your heart passionately lord jesus i love you with all my heart this night i make up my mind and i make a commitment to serve you and to live for you from today till eternity i declare that jesus is lord of my life i declare that my sins are forgiven i declare that the life of god eternal life is mine today holy spirit i receive you as the life of god in my spirit i declare that i'm a child of god forever let me pray for you father i thank you for these ones they have unashamedly come the bible says that if you are ashamed of me before men i'll be ashamed of you before my father jesus speaking lord these ones have come opening their hearts genuinely to receive of your grace i ask you oh god you who is the helper of us all help them i declare your sins forgiven i declare that the righteousness of god is at work in you the grace to live a victorious christian life the grace for passion and intimacy with god is released upon you in the name of jesus christ every pain and every legal access the devil has over your life is hereby broken forever in the name of jesus christ amen and amen i congratulate every one of you not listen i know that some of you are rededicating your life to christ there are a number of you those in here i just want you to walk out this way and then the various overflows i know that there are people attending to them they will have your details i praise you very quickly and you return back to join us in the service i salute you thank you so much for your courage your life will never be the same god bless you please direct them make sure someone is directing them make sure someone is directing them hallelujah Amen. Please sit down. Hallelujah. There are two ministries that I believe will be reignited in a fresh dimension. Two very great anointings. I really believe with all my heart and and it's been confirmed from different people seasoned veterans of the gospel across the earth number one is the healing ministry i believe that the church has lost a major dimension of the healing ministry it's true even some of us that supposedly walk in it the truth is that most people have not experienced the full import of the healing ministry the healing ministry i'm going to be showing you a few things and then we'll pray we'll get to the business of the night the healing ministry is very important it played a major role
the challenge was that most of the healing evangelists got to a point where they were carried away by the healing and no longer Christ and his purposes because the healing ministry is a means is a sign that points men to Jesus it's possible that because of the charismatism around the healing ministry you can veer off and your whole focus becomes the miraculous and not the Christ himself the second ministry that I believe will be experienced is the ministry of wealth and abundance it's true this wealth transfer that you've heard people say I believe that God has suspended that dimension for a reason because as a body we are not yet ready for that dimension the our perspectives about kingdom wealth and finance does not warrant God releasing that level of blessings because for many of us our hearts are still corrupt over the idea of money are we together the average person's idea about money is just some kind of um it's just a, a quest to get and buy nice clothes and nice cars and prove that i am successful there is a place for that but if that is the scope of your idea then you do not need any wealth transfer are we together yes so god must first walk upon our hearts is the same way years ago there was a very strange manifestation of a lot of things that happened in zaria angelic feathers gold dust silver dust you know people started having these strange encounters and one i remember one night the lord told me said i'm withdrawing this experience because it's leading to idolatry it didn't reach one month and that experience was withdrawn people will go to pray and for hours all they are doing is checking their hands to see if there's any gold or silver to use it as an evidence to validate spirituality and god said no if i don't take it away one demon will give a, an innocent prayer warrior a feather and he will carry it and idolize it in his room until he begins to mislead another group of people and so god withdrew that experience god only releases experiences to people and territories where there is a level of maturity and discernment he knows that when this reality reaches the people they will not abuse it until now as i speak to you there are people who don't understand the purpose of money and it is being abused and so god will not release it until the body is taught the money is safer with bill gates is safer with all of these people than it is with preachers and pastors because they have worked on their minds they are better treasurers for god than us so all it is true that there is a wealth transfer coming but not not some money monger kind of thing it won't come that way anyway i just thought to share that let's look at the ministry of jesus luke chapter 6 i study the gospels a lot because the ministry of jesus inspires me He's the greatest model that I have. And I like, to, I like to study his idea. What did he do? What was captured in his ministry? Luke chapter 6 and verse 17 to 19. Luke chapter 6 verse 17 to 19. This is Jesus now having the sermon on the mount. Okay, I'll just read it from here. And he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of the disciples a great multitude of people listen out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear now listen carefully the people came to hear amplified says to listen to him he came to hear him and to be healed there is a relationship between hearing and being healed they didn't just come to be healed they came to hear and to be healed verse 18 or still verse 17 to be healed of all their diseases 18 and they that were vexed with unclean spirits so we see the kind of people that came for Jesus' meetings those who were sick they were sick 
terribly diseased they came to listen to him there was something he taught them about listening to his words and the healing power of God so they came to hear and to be healed the second category of people we see they that were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed unclean spirits the source of their pain and their discomfort were the presence of unclean spirits and the Bible says and the whole multitude listen sought to touch him why for there went power out of him to heal them I love the ministry of Jesus so the Bible tells us why the people got healed that there was power other versions say virtue there was something that Jesus had that will lead him into the people and the moment it entered them they would discover that their sicknesses were gone are we together hmm. Acts chapter 10 when you read verse 38 Peter was teaching that was a salvation of the Gentiles in the house of Cornelius the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 with the Holy Ghost and with power listen it says who went about doing good went about doing good went about doing good so we see other things that jesus did that were not captured he didn't just heal the sick alone he didn't just deliver the oppressed alone he went about doing good breakthrough is a good thing restoration is a good thing he went about doing good and then healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him any ministry that wants to reproduce Jesus' ministry. And, and by the way, I hope you know that what we do today is an extension of his ministry. Jesus' ministry did not end with his ascension to heaven. Are we together now? He said, it is expedient that I go. Why? So that the comforter will come. It is to your advantage, advantageous to you that I go. Because my transition will allow the Holy Spirit to come. Like the mantle of Elijah came on Elisha. Now that mantle that was on Jesus, the Spirit himself, without measure, so that we can partake of that Spirit and become an extension of his ministry. We are gathered tonight as proof that the ministry of Jesus has not ended. We are gathered tonight because we believe that he still heals. Do you believe that? We are gathered tonight because we believe that he still delivers. We are gathered tonight because we believe he still does good. Hallelujah. The Bible says, as the Father had sent me, this is Jesus speaking, the Father sent me, I now send you, as the Father sent me, both in terms of the scope of the assignment and the equipping. The Father sent me with power, and every time I spoke, something left me to validate what he said. He said, so also I sent you. You see, if the power of God does not back up his word, it's fraud. It is the power of God that validates the truth, the potency of God's word. So at some point in this service, we should expect the power of God to find expression. Not just in people, you know, receiving impartations here and they're wonderful. But we expect the power of God to heal the sick. We expect the power of God to cleanse all kinds of unclean people who are cohabiting with demon spirits that are manipulating their lives and manipulating their results. At some point in this service, we should see the superiority of light over darkness. Is that true? At some point in this service, God should be able to step over your issue. To see that that 10 year long issue just dissolves like this. Just like that. Is that true? If that happens, then we can say with all sense of gratitude that we are an extension of the ministry of Jesus. But listen to me brothers and sisters, if this does not happen, we are wasting God's time. And we are wasting the time of God's precious people. 
That's why we prepare for all of the meetings, especially the miracle service. Because you have not just come to watch a man. You have come to see an extension of the ministry of Jesus. You have come with your requests. You have come with your medical reports. You have come with your pain. You have come with all kinds of oppression. You have come with all kinds of closed heaven. And you're saying, Lord, if you are the only one I know who can help me, let me tell you, your coming is faith enough. Did you hear what I said? You're leaving your house to come is faith enough. It's true. Like a patient goes to the hospital. Once you're in the hospital, just leave the rest to the doctor. Then the doctor begins to prescribe. And this is what is happening to us. An extension of the ministry of Jesus. Let's look at one scripture. Mark chapter 1, 21. Mark chapter 1 and verse 21. And they went into Capernaum, still the ministry of Jesus, and straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered the synagogue and taught. It's interesting how Jesus held his crusades. He would take out time, not just to preach, but to teach. Jesus knew that teaching was the system for sustaining anything that the people were to receive. Are we together? If the entire scope of ministry is just miracles alone, it, it becomes volatile. The people receive it and then it just evaporates. But when they are taught, it guides their understanding to keep that which they have received. You can lose something you have received. It's true. You can lose healing. Demons can leave people and re-enter them again. But when the word of God is taught, it gives you the basis are we together now? So Jesus taught in their synagogues. We're reading. It's, it's a long reading. Let's see how far we can go. Just keep, just continue. And they were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. 23. And there was in their synagogue. I love Jesus. See how his miracle service was. As soon as he just finished preaching. It was time to demonstrate the reality of the kingdom. And there was in that service a man with an unclean spirit. And the demons began to cry out, 24, saying, Let us alone, what have we to do with thee? Thou Jesus of Nazareth, art thou come to destroy us? We know who you are, the Holy One of God, and so on and so forth. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold your peace and come out of him. This is Jesus for you. This is Jesus for you. Because that man's life was obviously in shambles because there was another spirit that was cohabiting with that individual manipulating his intentions and jesus looked at him this does not reflect the kingdom and he brought that spirit out like it's going to happen to many people the forces and the spirits that are responsible for the results we do not want but keep seeing until they leave all these things are a joke when the unclean spirit had turned him he cried out in a loud voice and he came out of him 27 we're reading down to i think it was 39 or so i just want us to walk through the ministry of jesus and they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves saying what thing is this what new doctrine is this for with authority he commanded even the unclean spirits and they do obey him let me tell you this when you command an unclean spirit and it goes, it is a big deal. Did you hear what I said? <laughs> Doctors can treat sickness. They can cast out devils. Machines can show an elongated lung or heart, but it cannot show the spirit sitting there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? These spirits are living entities. They can hear. They have a system and a structure. They were designed to respect some people and disobey some people. Are we together? They understand ranking in the spirit. So when you issue a command, as Jesus did, and these spirits are forced against their will to leave that individual and that habitation is proof of dominion. Are we together? Yes, it is. It truly is proof of dominion. Look at Jesus used this. The people were astonished. 
They said our priests and rabbis didn't do this. They couldn't do this. I hope you know that while all the priests used to preach, that man was in the temple and the spirits were hearing. But the words were not potent enough to force them to leave. So they kept coming service after service. May you not be a man of God that cohabits with demons. And that people come and sit under your anointing and under your meeting. And the demons that cause poverty, failure, whatever it is, you share the grace and they share the grace with you. And you go out. No, sir. Haba. What then is the excellency of light over darkness? Your presence should discomfort the gate of hell so well that there is no pretending about it. That's why some of you bring people here. You notice you bring them and when they sit down while praise and worship is happening, they want to run away. It's not them. It's not them. The devil knows that when you come into an environment that can bring you emancipation, Satan will revolt and fight and fight again and again. But tonight the devil is a liar. It's too late. Really, it's too late. 28. And immediately his fame spread abroad all through the region round about Galilee. And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Let's see what happened. And Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever and anon they tell him of her now jesus is healing we saw him cast out devils he's about to heal now and he came and took her by the hand i love jesus and lifted her up and how many how long immediately. immediately do you know if jesus did not touch her she would remain like that and you would think it's the will of god don't trivialize an anointed hand goodness jesus walks in and says i'm introducing something to this woman's body that until the arrival of that thing the condition does not change that contact the bible says immediately the fever did what that means the fever was a living thing it could move Abba, is it, are you not intelligent people the fever left pastor alpha left me before jesus came the fever was with her they gave it all kinds of interpretation jesus Look at what Jesus did. He didn't talk. He just touched. The Bible didn't say they shall lay hands on the sick and speak. Just by making contact alone. Are you seeing that now? Some, it was about the transference of virtue. And it forced the spirit. There was a separation. That means the discomfort you feel is because there is something with you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. That means that growth, that swelling is a sign that there is something with you. Ah, but the hands of Jesus extended through us. You see that? I, I'm, I'm creating expectation in you. That means that pile would never have been piled until a spirit came in partnership with your body. And just saying pile go is not what will, will make it go. There is an agency that will separate you from that pile. You will call it a miracle. There is no reason to remain sick when the spirit has been separated. Look at it. Immediately, not slowly. So the question is not whether you can be healed. The question is whether the anointing is sufficient to separate that spirit. Because when it happens, the Bible says immediately and she was so healed she went straight to the kitchen straight to the kitchen from a bed and he came and took her by the hand and brought unto him all that were there at even when the sun did set like koinonia now they brought unto him that means there was an information that had reached town that when we bring certain people to this man there was something about him that was able to heal them they brought unto him all that were what diseased and them that were possessed with devils see the kind of people that came to jesus as a man of god if these kinds of people are not coming to you it's not the issue of i'm not called into this ministry something is wrong because they should discern 
that the hand of God upon your life should function in a pattern similar to that of Jesus and should make them bring certain people. There are, there are creative dimensions that his anointing can bring. Creation is needed when there is no possibility of having that reality again. Then you create it. Not everyone may be sick, but let me tell you something. Everyone needs the hand of God. There are some of us, our heavens are closed totally. And don't act as if it's not important. Nobody is favoring you. No open door. You are born again, but your life and your door and destiny is closed. Can you trust God to open this door for you? It's not by might. It's not by power. You heard the testimony of, of uh, Joy. She said an uncle who does not even call her. Something made that uncle call, brothers and sisters. Because that uncle also has relatives somewhere. Everybody who blesses you has someone in need around him. What makes him to leave them and come to you? No. Are we blessed? One question I'll ask you and then we'll begin to pray. Are you truly tired of the situation? You see, there's something I think I was sharing with. I can't remember who I was sharing this with. I was saying pain. It was you, Jimmy. Pain is very important. Sometimes the only way to let people see your is allow that pain. Don't stop it. Because there are people, if you have not been pushed to the wall, you will not see the need for God. For as long as there is somebody answering your prayer for you, you will not see the need to be serious. So sometimes God deliberately allows it. And that pain, the day five of your children say, Daddy, is this how we'll continue? You just get up and say, I'm coming for Koinonia today. I'm, I'm tired of this. That pain was an indication that something is wrong. And that it needs remedy fast. Pain. There are people who will never run and come to God. But you just press one side of your stomach and you just feel, ah, something is growing. What is this? Next week, the thing increased. You told a doctor, just touch it and say, ah, I don't want to tell you the name. Pain. Just say, when is that miracle service said? The power of God is real. It can produce miracles. It will produce miracles in your life tonight. Do you believe it? I expect that not only would God heal the sick, not only will he cast out devils. Listen carefully. I expect that tonight by his spirit, he will lift you out of certain captivities. Lack of favor. Delay. There are some of us who are trusting God to return certain things that left your life for years. Whoever told you it cannot. You heard the lady that said they stole her phone. They came with matchet and stole her phone. I remember she sent me a text that they came to carry a matchet. Foolish thieves. They don't know that a body without a spirit is dead. The same way you have been carrying a certificate. That's the body. Where is the spirit component? That's why you drop it on a table and they throw it in a dustbin. But when the spirit component comes, let me tell you this. God never designed a man to do anything on earth unassisted. A spirit entity must assist you. Even you, if you meet a herbalist, that herbalist is not alone. There is a spirit assisting him. You see that? Yes. Don't walk through life by your strength and power. Please help them. Life will be too hard for you. Is is the mystery of hardship. Rejecting the assistance of the spirit. I would dare not do ministry without the spirit. What else will I be doing? But with God, with God, all things without him you are on your own but when you involve him and not only involve him go a step further by letting him lead the way then your life becomes a wonder i'm showing you many of you are surprised the same surprise was in the bible they were astonished what manner of man is this astonished 
and then the man if he's wise will tell you look i'm not alone jesus said i'm not alone all these miracles you see i'm being assisted brothers and sisters the result you see in this ministry is a product of assistance the realm of the spirit is in partnership you can't be standing here and someone is shouting outside shouting at overflow no no Abba. words are not hammer but when the spirit is upon them that word will enter you like a drug and all of a sudden you will find out that certain things will go <laughs> it will work in zaria it will work in lagos it will work in london it will work in saudi arabia it will work everywhere are we together the spirits that oppress us must give way I'm, gi I'm taking out time to charge your heart like this because I want you to receive the most important thing is not the ministrations as it were the most important thing is creating this expectation many of us come and we are just hoping um, okay God I know you will bless me in the name of Jesus may God lift you amen I just, well, it was a nice service and you go back and nothing happens you keep watching people come to testify blessed is she that believes the Bible says for unto her not unto them there shall be a performance hallelujah I believe the Lord I came here full of the Holy Ghost and I came here believing with all my heart you are sick get ready to be healed don't 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 say well let's watch and see get ready to be healed you are oppressed of the devil you may not even know you're oppressed you just know that nothing is working in your life I want you to be tired and say God will you bring me here so especially for those of you who came so far Lord will you carry me and bring me here and take me back like that there are some of you in ministry you came to contact fire Lord will you leave me will I leave my members my fellowship and come back here and go back no evidence of favor I believe him I believe that he's a mighty man I believe he's awesome I have seen his hand I have seen his power and ladies and gentlemen I present to you the same God yesterday today forever I present to you the same healer yesterday today forever I present to you the same deliverer I present to you the one who took Joseph from the prison overnight I present to you the one who turned Saul to the apostle I present to you the one who turned Rahab to be part of the genealogy of Jesus I present to you your destiny changer I present to you your destiny maker I present to you the anointer of men the one who puts oil upon the head of ordinary people and changes their life I present to you the prosperer the one who can program a climate of favor over a man as though you are holding a child. I present to you the one who can give you influence, can lift you from nothing and make your life a wonder, a specimen, an epistle of his hand. That's the God I present to you. I have given a very nice speech we're about to step back and allow the king of glory ride over this place and let me watch the mountain that stands before him let me watch Zerubbabel oh no no he said who art thou mountain who art thou mountain who art thou infirmity who art thou delay who art thou stagnation before Zerubbabel he said before Zerubbabel thou shalt be made plain Lift your hands, I want to pray. The Lord is starting tonight with an impartation. 
there is an impartation of the grace for favor this is what the Lord is telling me the grace for favor the grace I'm about to pray for favor favor is a revelation that God has given me my life is a testimony of that reality I want to pray for you now believe believe as I pray I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus I decree and declare right now father even as you have revealed to me from this main auditorium to overflow one overflow two overflow three and those online Lord I release an impartation for the grace for favor receive it right now in the name of Jesus receive that grace in the name of Jesus receive that grace in the name of Jesus I stretch my right hand and I decree and declare step into a new level of favor 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 we need favor in our lives most of the things we pray about are under the office of favor to solve i say it again in the name of jesus every challenge in your life that only the favor of god can solve i stand before the god who has helped me and has helped this ministry i release upon you an oil of favor take it now in the name of jesus take favor take favor receive favor in the name of jesus christ a strange dimension of favor favor that will surprise you favor that will accelerate your life when a life listen to me when a life has no favor it is clear the proof of lack of favor is the absence of helpers in your life not the absence of money you can have money you can have intellect you can have a job but when there are no men in your life you don't have favor the proof of favor is not the coming of money the proof of favor is the rapid response from men to attend to the issues of your life in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare that the man that must show up in your life to validate the grace for favor I prophesy them upon you now I call them by prophecy in the name of Jesus upon your business upon your job upon your projects may men arise to help you Hallelujah. There is the grace for favor. Those of you who are on the social media may have heard of a testimony that had been trending for a while. I traveled to Lagos last week and just when we got down from the aircraft on my way going, listen carefully, something is happening here. A young man just walked to me and held me and I looked at him and he said, sir, remember me. I said, well, I don't remember you. What's the story? He came here, Koinonia, with a property, his property, and carried it and gave me as a seed. I said, what for? I mean, you're a young man. What will you go and tell your wife? Brothers and sisters, from November till now, nine properties and one estate came to him. A young guy. Abba. Is it charm? what is on you is what brings things to your life it's not what you want it is what is on you in the name of jesus that anointing that must come on you i declare that it comes on your head right now it comes upon your head right now producing strange 
result it comes upon your head right now it comes upon your head right now just follow me some of you don't know how you need favor you know you need favor but you don't know what extent I can't imagine that there are human beings that live on this earth without favor you will never be able to be happy on earth no I can you check let's check our lives the truth is for many of us there is no favor it's not that the helpers are not there there has to be something on you to bring them every lifting that God has brought by his grace happened in this Zaria not London Zaria here many of us live unrewarded lives because there is nothing on you drawing men to bless you nobody thinks about you God does not talk to anybody about you a gentleman I think one of these uh, I can't remember one of these Fridays and he stood to see me after the service and he said man of God my life is hard can you help me with some money and I looked at him I said you are not a wise gentleman I know you need money now but you should ask yourself the person giving you the money where did it come from the wiser prayer is for favor I said let's do an experiment I told him I said I will pray for you for favor return next Friday and tell me what happened if nothing happens I will give you money agreed he said yes and I prayed for him and he went brothers and sisters on Monday Monday that's the Monday after that gentleman sent me a text and he said his uncle that he's even fighting with their father that he did a very serious transfer and told him that who helps you in school and he said nobody he said so why have you not been reaching me all of you these proud children and so on and so forth that he was going to start sending him money I said you you believe that that uncle just did it by his will listen this world is too wicked for somebody to just like you that's flattery this wicked world where a man can slaughter a child's head then what makes you believe they will just like you enough to see that you rise it takes favor can I pray that prayer for you again in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God you have done your best you have done your efforts you have struggled is almost killing you now receive the grace for favor receive the grace for favor may your life change by favor receive the grace for favor hallelujah it is favor that brings resources it is favor that brings opportunity there are many gifted people there's no one to reward them there are many nice people many wonderful musicians nobody to place a demand on their grace it's so annoying when you see someone you are better than but he has favor and you don't and yet you have to say yes sir her man did not think Mordecai was good enough but favor and he said everywhere you see the chariots of Mordecai bow the knee Mordecai is passing yes a gatekeeper you may not like a person but when favor is on them it will veto whatever you think I pray for you again every door that must open in this season to validate favor I command it to be open now I command it to be open now listen you're not going to build a house by savings let me tell you the truth it's not in today's Nigeria you're not going to buy a car by saving no I practice all these things you're not going to to settle and train your children just by saving money you will need a grace that can accelerate your results otherwise you will never be a giver you will never you can't be a giver just by saving peanuts 10 naira and 100 naira when there is a demand life will demand so much from you 
that if you are not operating under favor you will be frustrated and that's how satan wants to trap men he will trap you and make your life miserable let's release this favor on our families you have received it for yourself but let it get to your family i pray for you in the name of jesus christ my father every family that is represented here by the anointing of the holy spirit let there be a release of favor let there be a release of favor favor on every family favor on every family listen sometimes eh it is not warfare that destroys it is even how favor works favor can kill to make sure that one person rises some of these proud relatives that make fraternities with darkness and sit upon the destinies of families and make ghosts and say for as long as we are there you must route your success through us if you attempt to rise without us you will not rise i declare that the sword of favor may it get to every family and dislodge everybody who wants to be god in that family hallelujah favor in one minute i want you to begin to mention all the areas you want to see favor and speak lift your voice begin to pray begin to pray participate lord i release favor concerning this job pray i release favor i release favor favor concerning my building project I release favor. Are you praying? Shabalakata braska de malara malara bo. Entere kete 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 kete. Favor. You surround us with favor like a shield. You surround us with favor like a shield. Se kete 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 kete. Le kete baka proko to se kete. Pray. Make sure you are praying in the name of Jesus. Favor like a sheep. Favor in my academics, pray. Favor over my job. Lord, favor, favor, favor. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you the truth. You see, Ba, this prayer you are praying, if this prayer is truly answered in your life, this is how you will stand. What is this? This favor prayer you see, there are people who have touched up this favor. They can tell you, favor is fearful in its operation. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness and they carry the crippled man I don't deserve the palace he says still come and the king said you will sit here and eat with me let me tell you how you know it is favor listen favor is not one time when somebody just says hey, Jimmy, I want to give you water what, that's just goodness favor is I want to keep blessing you I want to continue doing this many of us what happens is that we are mistaken goodness for favor someone just appear once and just says look i want to help you and it never happens again when it is favor a process is ignited it keeps following like that it's true study the things in your life you'll be able to separate goodness from favor there are things that just happen one time but favor favor continues so i'm seeing fire on my hands and I want to pray because the Lord wants to bless the works of our hands. Listen, whether you are on a job or whatever it is, you see, these hands you see, they are, it's a mystery. It says, the, the hand of God, it was with this hand God made man. Are we together now? This hand you see is a symbol 
of your productivity and if it is not blessed it will bring struggle to you i want to pray i'm, I'm seeing fire on my hands and i want to pray because for many of us who are getting results but our results are too small i stretch these hands the fire that the lord put upon this hand in the name of jesus i release it let it come upon your hands let it come upon your hands representing your job your academics your business whatever it is that you're involved in i release i stretch my hands may that may that fire come upon you in the name of jesus christ you go back with that hand and write a proposal and it will shock you what will happen you go back with that hand listen listen believe this and pick up a document and submit and someone collects it and is under the influence of what your hand brought it's true it's true why does god do these things to give us rest so we can serve him why does god open doors to give you rest financial frustration and all kinds of related frustrations are strategies from satan to distract you and make you to keep seeking things you never will truly be able to seek god when certain things have not been solved in your life it's true you can't give god your best when you are still thinking of what to eat you are thinking of what to wear but when God takes those things away, your prayer life becomes worship, not just hours of petition in the flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Overflow 2. There's someone, the anointing of the Spirit is coming on someone. Overflow 2. The overflow by the roadside. Bring the lady. Hello, him, Adonai. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Overflow to the overflow by the road. Please, quickly. We have to hurry up. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Hello, him, Adonai. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Can I talk to you, madam? This woman, please tap her for me. Come. Hello, him There is a spirit that doesn't want this woman to rise. Hello, him Thy kingdom come. Thy will be. The Lord is opening the eyes of your parents. I'm seeing the Lord opening their eyes to a realization of something the devil has been using. In the name of Jesus, especially for this lady, I command it so now. In the name of Jesus Christ, that every conspiracy of darkness over you and your family is hereby crushed to pieces. In the name of Jesus. Madam, I don't know who you are, but let me pray for you. There is a spirit. I look at you and I see a woman who should be walking in certain realms of favor. You love the Lord, but this is like, it's like a trap. You just cannot move and make progress. And the Lord is saying, I should pray for you. As I pray for you, madam, you will be surprised to see what happens in your life. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release this woman. The devil has put something in this lady's stomach. This lady you are holding. 
I command in the name of Jesus remove that evil you have put now in the name of Jesus Christ I'm about to pray and I'm already seeing a vision of what will happen there will be such a massive 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 deliverance now let it not surprise you I've explained to you what this thing is it's a separation you should rejoice when it happens because it means that you are entering a new season a new season a new season a new season
them go now. Let them go now. Witchcraft, manipulations of darkness. In the name of Jesus, I command a separation through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit. I decree, I set it as an ordinance in the spirit. I announce liberty. Liberty, bring them out. I'm still praying. In the name of Jesus Christ, if there is any family that has been covenanted to any elements of the supernatural, whether the earth, whether fire, that people pass through fire to make ordinances at the count of three, I command those ordinances set on fire. One, two, three. Let there be liberation right now. Every family covenanted to the waters, covenanted to the air, to trees. I set you free now. And I'm seeing or your state or your state this is the hand of God the sword of the spirit going to or your state bringing deliverance there are times that God moves this way in the name of Jesus I command whoever is from that region may the power of God begin to touch you now may the power of God begin to touch you now complete liberty complete liberty Overflow three, please lift your hands. Just watch your screen and lift your hands. Overflow three. Don't worry, you you that you you don't have to bring them. The distance is far. Overflow three. Just look at me. I see the angels of the Lord doing something there. At the count of three, overflow three. I want you to shout the name Jesus because I'm seeing swords. That's what I'm seeing, and the Lord is bringing a massive, massive breakthrough, massive deliverance. In the name of the Lord Jesus, overflow three, are you ready? I'm seeing chains of stagnation about to leave you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, everyone under any kind of oppression, at the count of three, shout Jesus. One, two, three. Supernatural liberty. Supernatural liberty. An outpouring of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray for the sick shortly. Hold on guys. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Please, I want to pray. The Lord is showing me something that is very interesting. The Lord wants to break cycles. There are people every season certain things happen. Every September somebody must die. Every three, three years somebody married must divorce. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. You don't have to ask whether or not you are involved. Don't worry, the anointing will look for you. I decree and declare right now in the name of Jesus the power 
that activates cycles demonic cycles over the lives of people so that certain patterns and events keep repeating themselves in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands call that lady back that lady lift your hands my dear God is not done with you I look at you and I see oppression there is something that the devil has put in you if I don't pray for you very soon they will start telling you you will start feeling pain they will say fibroid in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands I command that devil let her go now in the name of Jesus Christ every cycle over anyone's life are you ready to shout Jesus now at the count of three to surprise you what God will do one two get ready three the chain of circles be broken cycles cycles of failure cycles of miscarriages cycles of unfruitfulness by the sound of the spirit be broken now hallelujah be broken now I want to pray um, please this man I don't know who the this man yes please quickly we are soon going to pray for the sick I may not have time to prophesy to individuals I'm standing near this lady and I'm seeing a snake this is what I see in the name of Jesus I curse that devil I'm not seeing a human being I'm seeing a snake in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ overflow one I'm seeing the power of God this I just mentioned snake and I was seeing serpents just moving at overflow one right now I'm seeing it's like a sword dividing those snakes that's what I'm seeing it's happening to people at overflow one in the name of Jesus let it be over now snakes and scorpions the mystery the mystery of snakes and scorpions he said I give you authority over snakes and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy sir I want to pray for you I don't know whether you came here for us you have been but, coming here uh, but I was tra I traveled before that so I have not been coming I want to pray for you yes, sir. if I don't pray for you the devil is going to kill you I'm looking at you and I'm seeing you inside a coffin they have already closed you I'm not a prophet of doom I want to pray for you you love Jesus be careful so that they don't bring these herbal things for you huh? uh, is that true yes, sir. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing them bring something for you to yes. help you yes, sir. that thing is a charm yes, it's sir. not half it's charm yes. native yes. doctor yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. that's what will even kill you yes, sir. it's not going to solve your problem yes, sir. the people doing it are well meaning yes, sir. but the truth is that they are going to kill you for nothing yes, sir. Yes, sir. thank you sir because you are not even responding to it the way they say you should respond to it yes, and you violate it will destroy you yes, sir. can I pray for you you have you have taken something in your system now that will even destroy you listen let me tell you when you are pressed we are humans and we can be pressed to the wall going to the devil to get a charm is, is you are facilitating your destruction if Satan gives you tea here he will hold a knife and stab you at the back father by the mercy of God I pray for this man let him not die in the name of Jesus I close the gate of the grave over your life in the name of Jesus both the herbalist and the conveyor of those charms in the name of Jesus we scatter that shrine into pieces in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you sir the Lord perfects you in Jesus name I pray something is leaving this lady oh dear she's vomiting I'm looking at her and I'm seeing something Agnes God is not done with that guy or that young man with blue please if you are not Agnes don't come here please name is Agnes where are you from I 
I need to pray for you. I'm seeing an attack on your life. This attack is coming from Calabar. Huh? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Sir. I have to pray for you. Where are you from? Cross River. You are from Cross River? Yes, sir. Come. I must pray for you. Kai. There is somebody, the Lord is setting the person free. I'm seeing a friend going to a harbor list and they are asking the friend to give somebody and they wrote the name of that person. You are here now. In the name that is above all names. I'm serious. Don't think I'm just hyping you. In the name of Jesus, whoever's name has been written by any demonic friend or whatever harbor list, in the name of Jesus, because that person you keep seeing dead dead people you even saw yourself in a coffin in the name of Jesus I cast that spirit now I'm going to pray for you and then we are going to pray for the sick right now ah. there is some serious deliverance I'm, I'm seeing something happening in the realm of the spirit this is this is this is a serious Father, let this lady be free right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come, you, this lady, come. You love Jesus? Huh? Yes, sir. Come. You, I, I'm not condemning you, eh? Look at me. You have to be very serious with God. One, two, friends. Look at me. God has delivered you many times. You would have destroyed yourself. Huh? You're a small girl. You need to love God with all your heart. Please be very careful so you don't go and put yourself in something that will destroy you. I love you, eh? I love you, and that's why I'm telling you this. You need, you need somebody to counsel you and follow you up. Hmm? I'm not going to say everything I'm seeing, but you have to be careful because it's God that saved you now. I'm seeing something, a virus. Anyway, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I pray for your daughter. Help her by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 I'm standing and I'm seeing a tree. And that tree is this lady. And something that was planted. And the Lord is saying uproot it. I uproot this thing now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I uproot it now. The spirit of the Lord is taking me to Benway State. I've never been there physically, but I'm seeing Benway, Benway, and I'm looking and I'm seeing like a tractor pushing trees down. It's like there is a covenant that has to do with trees. In the name of Jesus Christ, if there is any family involved in this, Sheketos Kotopakariakata, I command and uprooting every tree that has not been planted, help them by my father every tree i see benway state shekete keta katalia kata in the mighty name of jesus let there be an uprooting an uprooting an uprooting an uprooting in the name of jesus let me pray for you my dear you are a nice lady but there's bad luck in your life very bad luck and the lord wants to help you father help your daughter in the name of jesus christ bad luck be gone now and forever in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ may the lord help you come my dear let me pray for you i'm about to pray for the sick now our time is gone in the name of jesus christ there are some my spirit is heavy to prophesy but because we have to i want us to pray for the sick so that i can just make those declarations we may not have time for one-on-one -on -one prophecy but i'm telling you god wants to touch touch a lot of people my dear i want to pray for you in jesus name the lord is rolling away the reproach in your family rolling away the reproach in your family in the name of jesus my dear look at me you are entering a new level of lifting you that's what i'm praying for you for i'm seeing an angel pouring oil on your head and the lord is saying i should tell you 
that is a new level of lifting you this lady looking at me i prophesy it over your life in the name of jesus christ who is this who agnes agnes where is she abuja abuja sir your sister yes father in the name of jesus i pray for this lady where is she abuja sir she loves jesus yes sir in the name of jesus christ pray that no man will come into her life and destroy her eh? in the name of is she married huh in no. the name of uh, whatever it is in the name of jesus christ may god help you mama come let me pray for you it's your season of breakthrough come is this your child come boy come i'm looking at this boy and i'm seeing that god is going to use him this is a small boy boy how are you the, the boy doesn't even know but i'm going to pray for him samuel did not know that he will become a great prophet one day when eli he was just an innocent boy i'm going to pray for him mama please stand up i will pray for you look at me ma please don't be embarrassed but the lord is saying he wants to take suffering from your life this thing they call in house wahala god wants to take it from your life you are a very sincere woman that loves the lord but this this cause of hardship um this woman loves the lord with all her heart father you what's what's the name of this boy Riba, huh? lifted okay. your name is lifted yes father i lay hands on lifted in the name of jesus christ use him mightily we are all products of your grace lift him and use him mightily in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ mama i pray for you in the name of jesus christ and i'm telling you this the month of april is your month of strange breakthrough in the name of jesus christ the month of april is your month of breakthrough azuka come lift the camera first let me pray for you and then you keep the camera i want to pray for you because i'm seeing a big project coming for you and this project is going to lift you this is something that has to do with your snapshot but god is bringing someone it's been something you have desired that god will bring someone to open a door and truth you have been faithful you have even been serving in this house but i want to pray for you lord in the name of jesus christ lift him take him to that dimension of grace i release that anointing upon you it will no longer be an ordinary camera i call forth men that will lift you i command it so i decree and declare in the name of jesus christ open doors for you open doors for you in the name of jesus christ come this lady um sarah come there is witchcraft in your family i have to pray for you this thing is affecting everybody in the family everybody everybody not there's no exception everybody lord take away this plague of witchcraft in the name of jesus christ wonderful people beautiful ladies but all kinds of trouble from the pit of hell in the name of jesus christ i silence the voice of the accuser i silence the voice of the accuser i silence the voice of the accuser in the name of jesus christ we are going to pray for the sick now listen i know that there are a number of people who came here sick and a number of you have come trusting god for healing and miracle let me pray for this lady how many of you have your prayer request now lift it up ushers your prayer request those online make sure we collect it this this lady let me have her hands lord jesus let this trap of darkness over this family represented by this lady give way now in the name of jesus christ just hold her gently she'll be fine submit your prayer request quickly now we are going to pray for the sick don't allow any nonsense remain in your body no matter how small make sure you insist that it leaves make sure you insist that it leaves we are going to be very fast please we'll be very fast now let me say this when you stand to receive healing 
don't just stand and be staring as if you are sleeping let your heart be open are we together number two accept whoever is praying for you ask you what is wrong you don't have to say okay it is my ears or my don't worry don't worry the people praying for you have been trained and the anointing of the spirit will touch it doesn't matter what auditorium it's a corporate grace that is working here hallelujah and for all of us who are seated whilst this is happening make sure you are praying because I'm, I'm literally sensing as if I want to throw up. It's the spirit of prophecy. There's, there's something that the Lord is putting in my spirit to release. And that's why I want to pray for the sick quickly. So that we will pray this prophecy. If we do this, I'm satisfied in this service. We have to be very fast so that we'll conserve time. Hallelujah. Jesus. Someone please help with collecting the request. Make sure that even those at the extremes of the road their requests are collected please everybody did father in the name of jesus we pray by the ministry of the spirit several people serving as contact points but we pray that your power and your life will touch the sick lord your people have come some of them with incurable diseases some of them with all kinds of devils i decree and declare that your anointing will prevail over every challenge let your people return with testimonies in the mighty name of jesus please be seated while you pray for a while as we pray for these people pray spiritualize yourself make sure that you are submitting your request and make sure you are praying thank you jesus my beautifier you have taken away the shame taking away the pain you make my life so beautiful my beautifier you have taken away the shame taking away the pain you make me just like you my beautifier my beautifier you have taken away taking away the shame taking away the pain taking away the Pain. Taking away the pain, make me just like you. Just like oh, you. my beautiful, my beautiful, you are taking away, taking away the shame, taking away the pain.
이보주고 이보게 만두에 이보주고 이보게 만두에 이보주고 이보게 만두에 이보주고 이보게 만두에 
way maker, miracle walker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Presented here are the requests of people from several nations of the world and several across this nation. In the name of Jesus, Joshua Selman cannot answer any man's prayer. 
so Lord I transfer the trust of your people to you the one who is able to meet every need and on the strength of the grace that only comes from you and in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God the resurrected lamb the one who is most victorious I prophesy and I turn every request here to become a testimony in the name of Jesus Lord as I walk through these requests in the name of Jesus that is exactly how your people walk through every challenge every challenge every challenge no matter what it is I decree and declare that the grace to triumph above it is released in the mighty name of Jesus Christ listen to me no matter what it is no matter what it is provided it found its way here in the name of Jesus Christ the same hand that wrote it is the same hand that receives the testimony the same hand that wrote it is the same hand that will receive the testimony there are people who need to lack sleep for these prayers to be answered may they lack the sleep there are people who need to be promoted for this prayer to be answered may they be promoted there are agents of darkness that must be laid to rest for these prayers to be answered may they be laid to rest in the name of Jesus Christ let's pray if they are still praying for you in any of the overflows don't worry you can just connect with them while I pray for you by the grace of God you will not write your request twice I thought I was done but I just felt drawn again to it whatever it is that you wrote here that requires a creative miracle that means the solution is not currently in existence anywhere may the one who created the heavens and the earth create your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ I want to pray for you as long as God grants me the grace I will never stop prophesying over you it is the greatest thing I think I can do if I give a word of knowledge because I'm limited by time and I'm limited by my own understanding and my level of alignment to God I may not be able to accurately address everyone but when it comes to prophecy everyone can receive are we together now wherever you are you can receive you've heard the testimonies you've seen the things that happen the Bible says everyone who speaks let him speak according to the measure of grace there are some things this anointing can do and let's trust God that it happens in your life let's pray lift your hands father in the name of Jesus Christ I pray that for everyone here who started this year in tears already that from January February you've not known joy I declare that as this week ends that's how your trouble and your sorrow ends too the Bible says don't weeping endures for a night it says but joy comes with the morning I decree and declare the kind of testimony that will make you get down on your knees and say Lord I've seen you bless me but not this dimension may the God I serve release it to you anyone here jobless or trusting God for a better job in the name of Jesus between now and March miracle service return with your miracle job return with your miracle job return with your miracle job anyone here due for promotion and whether based on tribal sentiments or whatever it is you've been kept at a level in the name of Jesus I open the doors for you rise to a new dimension in the name of Jesus Christ every 
manifestation of delay in your life others move forward but when it gets to your turn something just clamps you in one position or slow progress slow progress is as destructive as delay i command speed to your life i speak speed to your life i prophesy speed to your life in the mighty name of jesus christ i decree and declare every advantage that the enemy has over your life in the name of jesus this is the season where all those doors are closed forever i pray for those in business here i speak over it the grace for multiplication let it come upon your business in the name of jesus christ i pray for those who are trusting god to correct certain things in their lives it may be results for students it may be something it may be a mistake of the past you've seen god correct things in strange ways here i command supernatural correction for you for every student here that the result you are holding is not your real result i don't care how long in the name of jesus the son of the living god we correct it right here anyone here involved in any kind of project building project whatever major project you or your loved ones i decree and declare the finishers anointing comes upon that project in the name of jesus christ let me pray over your finances listen let me tell you this the bible says believe in the lord your god so shall he be established he said believe in his prophets so shall you prosper if you truly believe god will surprise you in the name of jesus christ i pray for you i give you two weeks from today in the name of jesus christ that between now and the next 14 days let something notable happen to your finances listen I don't want you to think as I'm praying you are thinking oh God will use a B leave whoever God will use to him I'm not talking business in the name of Jesus I say it again between now and the next 14 days may the lifter of men surprise you in your finances hallelujah every gift of the spirit that you had once seen in your life and for some reason is either depleting in the grace for dispensing it or not there again i prophesy supernatural activation right now supernatural activation right now the supernatural grace for soul winning drawing people to god a strange grace that will not give you peace until people are coming to Jesus through you I release that grace over you I release that grace over you I release that grace over you take that grace now the grace to validate signs and wonders that through your hand listen not just through Joshua Selman in the name of Jesus those hands that are stretched towards me I prophesy to you the unction to walk in strange miracles receive it in the name of Jesus the grace to reproduce the miracles in this house I release that grace young and old male or female receive it in the name of Jesus I speak over your life that as you utter words concerning the destinies of men you will watch them come to pass with your very eyes in the name of Jesus Christ whoever needs to make peace with you I decree and declare the grace of God compels them to make peace with you hallelujah who 
whoever has been directed by God to bless you and the devil is stopping them from obeying God is not necessarily financial it may be to bless you with an information access opportunity whoever is supposed to bless and lift you and in the name of Jesus the devil wants to stop them I cleared the way for your contact with them in the name of Jesus anyone here who needs an urgent breakthrough maybe something that has to do with house rent or maybe something that involves the police just something that if God does not intervene the embarrassment is going to be serious I pray that between now and Sunday the God that I serve you may not see the wind you may not see the rain but brothers and sisters may my God step in and surprise you We're rounding up whatever has covered the glory of God upon your face so that people cannot see and partake of that grace and also reward you I tread that veil into pieces in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus I pray for any and everyone here suffering from any kind of barrenness in the name of Jesus Christ by next miracle service you come back pregnant I say it again by next by next month miracle service you return with your baby in your womb in the name of Jesus the spirit that makes you see what you want but never hold it is close to you you see it they promise you and say by tomorrow I will do something then in the night something happens in the name of Jesus everything your eyes have seen I put it in your hand everything your eyes have seen I put it in your hand when you speak it is within your power to make it happen forgive us for our unbelief forgive us for thinking you are a man you are god the creator of the ends of the earth i wish i told you people to rehearse this song Creator of the universe, what can you do? What can you do, Jesus? The name above every other name.
last time you are able. You are able. bless you please be seated yes he is able yes he is able great and mighty God you are able Jesus the name above every other name what can't you change what can't you change you are the master of the universe. What can you do? What can you do, Jesus? Let me encourage you tonight, believers. Whatever God tells you, He can do it. Believe me. Believe me. Don't mind what you see when He's speaking to you. Just take your eyes away and with childlike foolishness say lord i believe if god tells you i am lifting you on the wings of eagles say lord i believe don't ask and say who is my uncle uh -uh. i believe i believe this ministry is a testimony of what god can do when he finds men who can dare to believe him jesus we give you the praise in the name of jesus christ hallelujah praise the lord Let's honor our worship team. Come on. Absolutely. Amen. Praise the Lord. Look, guys, I am so proud of you. You do not imagine. I was talking to a Jimmy and said, look, very soon, we're going to start our own record label. Yeah. Absolutely. We'll make it happen. And by the Spirit of God, it will bless the nations of the world. And you have the opportunity to go around the nations of the world and be a blessing to the body in the name of Jesus. Let's honor them one more time. Thank you. Manasseh is with us today. Bless him. The bishop is around. Hallelujah. Bless you, sir. Thank you so much. I want to welcome everyone. We'll be very brief tonight. We're going to pray. I want to start tonight, um, I'm going to give us a very strong admonition which also doubles as an instruction. So please be ready to write. The Lord put this in my heart to share with us. It's been a wonderful year and God has been faithful. But let me remind you that the year is not over. Like Bishop David Oyedeko will say, he made the heavens and the earth in seven days. I don't care whether it's prophetic seven days or real seven days. My faith can agree on the one I want God to move on. Praise the Lord. Whether it's a thousand years, seven days, I know that even if it is in one day, it says, as soon as Zion travails, she shall put forth a child. He said, have you ever heard this proverb that a woman will give birth in one day? Be pregnant in one day and give birth in one day. That's God for you. Hallelujah. I still believe that the best of the year for me is still to come. I truly believe. God has done things that have brought tears out of my eyes, but I believe for myself that between now and December 31st, I am yet to see the hand of God. And so, but I want to encourage us, even as we begin to set the pace for 2018. If you will be there, you can write. <laughs> no, gone are the days where people, in, in a false show of humility, they say, we don't know whether we can see tomorrow is a lie. Don't, don't let any man um, bring that nonsense around your table. No, you can believe. There are scriptures that authenticate the quality of your life, the longevity of your life. And the problem is that we come from environments that sociologically condition us to defeat. Thank you, Jesus. I want to give you a few things that the Lord 
put in my heart to encourage us really this is this is what i'm here to do this night and then a few other things that god will grant us grace to do now most believers are not taught the relevance of a retreat most christians are not taught that a retreat is part and parcel of the spiritual growth process of a believer we teach fasting we teach prayer but very few believers have been taught as a corporate doctrine not just a time out away from people but a retreat that you end and begin seasons in your life in the presence of God it is risky to end and begin seasons in your life in the flesh the most spiritual aspect of your life should be when seasons are ending and when seasons are beginning because that's when Satan gets at people when the when when the seasons have been cleared up and you're moving it's difficult for Satan to derail you are we together now so it is very very important every one of us must make sure that we use this one month that we're having and take out at least a few days for a quality retreat now there are different kinds of retreats we have a workers retreat as a ministry there are all kinds of retreats families have their retreats but this retreat i'm talking about is a retreat when you are exclusively alone with god not even husband and wife not even father and children no there are certain things god will never tell you in public there are certain things that you will only hear from god when you are alone with him are we together it is it is a very deep and simple spiritual mystery that guarantees victory many believers have not paid attention to it retreats very important end of year retreats very important you must take out time end of year retreat cannot be done in a few hours that is laziness you didn't have a retreat you just had a quiet time a retreat should be at least minimum two solid days you can't spend one day one day alone should be dedicated to thanksgiving is god speaking to us so every single one of us and those following online we must take out time to have personal retreats what are the activities that should happen in the retreats number one thanksgiving your end of year retreat is barren of god's power until you begin and lavishly communicate thanksgiving thanksgiving what we did here tonight is just a representation the same way you spend a night vigil praying and putting your needs you must thank god mention them one by one let me tell you i know this about god he never gets tired hearing people thank him lord thank you thank you you gave me tea thank you last year it was without blue band you added blue band this year so you observed it you see that not lord you thank you for the food you gave me that's a careless thanksgiving father thank you last year it was tap water now you gave me bottled water thank you that means you are careful you are forgetting not his benefits when it comes to requests we are very meticulous lord give me one two three four then when it comes to thanksgiving we say lord even me i can't remember are you not god don't you know everything I, I just thank you for everything let's go to another prayer request and god says how selfish selfish when you thank god mention things one by one lord thank you i was on my way to kaduna and the car wanted to capsize you saved me thank you and god said ah, this happened january say lord i didn't forget you are too faithful for me to forget that event he say you remember this for me get ready for another dimension thanksgiving write it down thanksgiving we must take out quality time to thank him number two i'm teaching you how to maximize 
to set the pace to maximize your retreat what do you do during your personal retreat review your progress for the current year 2017 now that's what you do you sincerely honestly unashamedly review the year and i'll dwell here a bit to help us understand i want all of us to really understand these things the second thing you do at a retreat is to review the year and you don't just review the year carelessly you break your review into six different units write it down the first area is your spiritual life you review your spiritual life review your passion for god review the illumination of the word that you have accessed what do you know now that you did not know last year what do you understand now that you did not understand last year review your character create a scale for it can i say i am improving not just in the knowledge of god am i useful to society am i becoming a leader am i becoming a person of character so your spiritual life is the first area that you have to review let me tell you something about retreats you must be honest you see why you have to be alone excuse me you must be honest you must be unashamed you must be very sincere before god number two mental development and your capacity you review that area did i cooperate with the word of god to develop my mind did i acquire useful informations that will set me on the cutting edge of relevance did i just pray and fast and build my life spiritually and allowed my mind and my relevance with my sociological environment to die are we together now yes it matters that we not only grow spiritually but we sustain the ability to be useful we must be able to communicate the life of christ to our environment so you review it what books did i read what do i know about leadership did i learn anything did i build my mind what do i know about mindsets am i still carrying my village in my head moving around with it am i still carrying the attributes that keep me poor and a failure am i still carrying the attributes that make good things to live my life is god helping us number three review how much you have taken care of your body your health in a retreat yes sir that's the best place so that you can easily ask for forgiveness when because the only person you really have offended is god this body belongs to him for some of us 2017 has been a useful year spiritually and a careless one health wise is that true review oh this year lord i apologize i ate anyhow i did all kinds of things anyhow destroyed my body why do you make these reviews because you need this body to last very long are we together gone are the days when people don't talk about this in church and they tell people the most important thing is your spiritual life and you see someone of 32 looking like 50. they ask him how old are you he said i will be 33 next year say so, what so why are you looking at a condition make crayfish bed no you are not a crayfish you are created in the image and the likeness of god some of those sayings we must start getting them out of the body of christ they look very nice but these are the things that authorize satan to destroy our lives hallelujah your health and some of us it is not even poverty it's carelessness write that word down this is a word that you should look at very carefully during your retreat many people's lives are destroyed including their health because of one word carelessness unattentiveness to details hallelujah number four review your assignment the reason for which god brought you review your purpose 
your kingdom service these are things that you review at a time of retreat lord i look at the compass of my destiny did i make progress this year can i say from prophecy to manifestation i have moved forward you see this assignment and purpose thing you you, you hardly even hear it again people don't talk about it it says lo i come as it is written of me in the volume of the book to do your will the reason why many people have time to waste their life is because they are not occupied with purpose if purpose does not occupy you anybody can call you any day and say are you free sir yes come and follow me somewhere god designed your time to be well invested fulfilling your assignment this idleness that our generation has is because we are not occupied in purpose and then the recent um i would say trick of the devil is to make people busy but not moving forward motions like sitting on a rocking chair the chair is rocking consistently but you are not making progress oftentimes jesus would retreat and look okay i must be here i must be there your assignment your purpose i don't know my purpose but you can look at your service in the house of god use that as a template what was your level of commitment what was your level of diligence are we together very important this is what i do during my retreats number four the fourth area number what number five i beg your pardon your finance write it down your finances you have to flog it out in the secret place are we together now you've looked at your spiritual life mental transformation your body your health is that true and then your assignment then your finances we're very unapologetic about the usefulness of financial resources both in the quality of our lives and kingdom advance i'm not one of those pretentious people that would downplay the role of financial resources in helping an individual live a useful life i've shared it again and again with us that living to seek money all your life is a cost it's not just bad it's a cost it's one of the most distracting strategies of satan when a man spends all your life looking for money it's a cost nobody was ever designed to do that what time then do you have in building this chase for money has made us to leave our children to the hands of satan has made us to leave our purpose there are people called as prophets and apostles but they only realize one week to their death they spent their whole life chasing money and they never find it please let me say it again and again do not ever plan to continue pursuing money all your life. There is an exact time where God should help you put together financial resources that afford you the opportunity to serve God so that you can turn and focus on the more useful things. Making financial pursuit priority in your life forever is a cause. It may be within the time you are seeking, that's all right so this is very important review because for some of us our whole lives is built around money money and we never get it you talk two minutes money everything money you say jesus the person replies back with money 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 every time you have to review is that true Was I able to engage the keys that bring for wealth and abundance this year? Or I just had it and it didn't work? You will easily know whether you engage it by the results you got. Finance is one area where your disobedience shows immediately. Immediately. So you must be sincere. This year, God gave me one million naira. God gave me hundred thousand naira. What did I do with it? I made a mistake i gave hundred thousand naira to four one niners you don't jump that what is the lesson that i have to learn there is that true god gave me two hundred thousand 
I bought a shoe and I bought a shirt that is not yet my level to prove a point to people who are not interested. Oh Lord, forgive me. Don't say it's alright. Ask for forgiveness because that is sin. Is that true? When God gives you resources and you waste it, if nobody has told you it is sin, believe me. Lord, I gave you offering of 1010 Naira. I gave you offering of 2020 Naira. But my average dinner was 2000 Naira. It's a sign that you are not a serious believer. I know you think, I'm not talking about money. You know that God has helped us. But it's important. These are some of the things that you do during your retreat. A measure of your passion for the house of God. And that includes with your resources. All this 1010 10 Naira giving. You know, most times we lie to ourselves that it doesn't matter. The amount does not matter. Are we not Bible students? He that soweth sparingly. What is sparingly? Small, scanty. Shall reap, but he shall reap scanty. That's why you get one testimony in four months. Correct? You are reaping. But he that soweth bountifully, lavishly, extravagantly. He said he will reap. The Bible said that scriptures cannot be broken. So don't say that it does not matter. It could be a time for you. I remember it was in one of my retreats, honestly speaking, that the Lord challenged me on this. The level of giving was far less than the level of God's blessing on my life. And the Lord rebuked me. And I made up my mind and I made a vow. There is a minimum amount I will never give as offering again forever till Jesus comes. Yes, it's true. It's true. It's true. So review it. What do you understand about finances? Review it. If all you know about finances is business and job is better, you have to sit down and flog that area. Because neither of them in themselves will give you money. Number six, relationships. The sixth area that you will look at in your retreat is your relationships. Marital relationships, career relationships, business relationships, destiny relationships. Some of us almost wasted our year today because of the presence of bad and useless associations. Associations that should have nothing, nothing to do with our lives. It's all this, uh, it's our tribe, it's our church, it's our this. Is that true? The Bible says, he that walks with the wise will be wise. But it says the companion of fools will be destroyed. Relationships. It matters. Review them. Review them. Who did you give access to this year? Whose presence destroyed your productivity? Who did you give access to this year that destroyed your potential for more results? Who should you have given access to this year that would have improved your life? Some of you, your relationship here, you even need to go back and check with the Holy Spirit. What degree of access did you give him? Relationships. Now, when you review these six areas, let me be honest with you. Your entire life revolves around these six areas. Your spiritual life, your mental development, your health and physical well-being, is that true? Your assignment, your career, whatever it is, your financial resources and your relationships. There is no man that will ever be a failure if he excels in this area. Usually what I do is that I scale all six areas and look at the best performing area and the worst performing area and I must answer why. I wouldn't just say I will improve. Why? Why was this the best and why was this the worst? If your relationships for inside, for instance, was the worst this year, what don't I know about friendship? What have I not learned? Maybe I'm neglecting honor. Maybe I'm not valuable enough. Maybe I'm too much of a talkative. Maybe I'm not somebody who can be committed secret. Maybe I'm somebody who is not friendly. Maybe I'm someone who is jealous. Lord, help me. You write it down. Are you seeing how people grow in retreat? You never come out of that experience the same. No, sir. 
people jump into the new year and laugh and fast for 10 days or 21 days and become the same old them again and you see the bible says you never put new wine in an old wine skin if your wine skin is old nothing new will ever come you will have to replace that wine skin like a snake molting shedding off the old skin so that there can be room for expansion he said go and borrow vessels borrow the wine skin borrow not a few and the more the wine skin the more capacity for the anointing to function is that true you must take out time so this is the second thing you do the first thing let's review thanksgiving thanksgiving then the second thing you do is a review of the year i gave you six aspects of your review the third thing is that you must plan for 2018 plan for 2018 i'll tell you how to plan shortly please write this it's very important plan for 2018 it's amazing how many people don't plan they think just because they are writing what they would do they think that's planning that's not planning many times those things are just wishes because at the end of the year less than one percent of them ever happen that's not a goal how do you plan set clear goals in these six areas we just reviewed set clear goals with scriptural backings in each of them i am convinced that if you set a goal in any of these six areas and it doesn't have a scriptural backing it will not come to pass because there is no basis for committing god remember your success is based on your partnership you are not going to plan alone for by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail you must plan and add a scriptural backing that means a spiritual basis for committing god in those areas and then you must add time targets to them every day is not conducive for everything no sir when you buy a product if we pick up this bottle of water you will see there's a little inscription there the manufacturing date and then they write something best before in other words to get the best of this pro this product it should be consumed within this time range putting time target to your goals puts a healthy pressure on you to be able to achieve them the reason why i believe that a lot of us have defaulted on our goals is because there is no time allocation so we make it look like every day is conducive no sir if you build a house at 70 years it's not a testimony if you finish school at 60 years it's not a testimony is that true if a woman gives birth to her first child at 60 years it's an unusual testimony it's because it's not supposed to be so is that true if god blesses you at 80 years who are you going to leave it for you will be angry and be frustrated so there are things that we must trust god to help us fast track in our life say amen and let me come to the gentleman and just talk to us a little please plan turn to any brother seated near and say brother plan just leave the sisters in one minute say brother plan listen spiritual people spiritual people are some of the poorest planners we have especially in this country we don't plan for our greatness we just hope and wish and pray bishop oyedeko said praying without planning is playing without knowing you have to be like nehemiah with one hand you are building but with another hand you are holding the sword both hands cannot hold the sword one hand is holding the sword and another hand is building he says every house is built by some man but god is the builder of all that some man must build the horse is prepared for battle but safety is of the lord but it does not stop you from preparing the horse are we together now i expect every gentleman here to start planning married or not sit down and plan here's what scripture says when i was a child i thought like a child correct i understood like a child i acted like a child he says now that i am a man i 
lay aside these childish things. Some of you, that's what will happen in your retreat. You have to sit down and tell yourself, this childishness in my life must go forever. Comma, this foolishness in my life must go forever. This stupidity in my life must go forever. Somehow we have this belief that because God is able, without our engaging him through the application of the wisdom of God, things will just happen just like that. We are tired of irresponsible fathers. We are tired of irresponsible gentlemen. We are tired of nuisances to society. A gentleman who should be capable of feeding and taking care of his siblings and taking care of a generation is still depending on his old and aged parents. Blasting in tongues but depending there. It should not be. It should not be. There is an honor that comes when certain things are in place in your life. Is that true? I'm speaking to everybody, but I'm speaking especially to our gentlemen. Please, let's go back to God and plan. This rat race of visiting everybody. Today you are here. Tomorrow you are there. My brother, what are you doing with your life? You say it is well. No, it's not well. You sit down and plan. What are you doing with your life? I want to marry apostle wonderful and eat what show me the blueprint of of the, not the timetable of your cooking the, the capability to be able to fend and take care of the family especially do you know because in africa let's be very honest if i handpick everybody here almost everybody here has at least four or five people depending to eat from him is that true leave the ladies gentlemen i'm talking to you i'm coming to the ladies pick anybody at random there is one neighbor one one cousin you know one relative that you didn't even know you are related to that needs you to feed so gone are the days where you say i have enough for myself no you must flog it out plan 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 I will take the month of January to study only on finances even if they give you a message on rapture you say I'm born again I have a goal I'm studying on finances I'm spending the month of February to study on faith on faith I'm studying the month of uh, the month of March to study on the anointing I'm studying the month of uh, June or April or whatever to study on my giftings and potentials. I'm spending the month of July to study on ministry or my assignment. That's how we grow. You don't get up every day and open to any part of scripture and just read and convince yourself that you are growing. You must plan. Are we together? By the grace of God, there, there is almost a message concerning every major area of your life. Go to the media stand. There are teachings. The media department can help you compartmentalize the teachings. If it is success, if it's your spiritual growth, character development, you know, salvation, etc. Whatever it is. There are teachings and they are all free. Camp with them. You must plan. Number four. The fourth thing that I want us to do by the grace of God is that all of us as a family of faith individually we are going to be studying the book of Proverbs. Write it down. We are going to be studying the book of Proverbs. All the 31 chapters. Study, not read. There's a difference between studying and reading. You can take two, two chapters and finish it in 15 days. You didn't study, you read. You glanced through. Let's use this break period to extensively study the book of Proverbs. Go online. There are all kinds of commentaries that have been done on that book. Study carefully. Don't read to finish. Read to understand. The book of Proverbs, the Lord put this in my heart. We're studying. The fifth admonition which comes as an instruction is that every one of us as much as God has granted us the understanding 
have a sacrificial seed wrapped with expectation this is between you and god a sacrifice is not a seed a sacrifice is bread he said cast your bread upon the water he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater but there are times he will challenge you to give both the bread and the seed a sacrificial seed i'm already doing mine and i'm doing it again and again it's a principle i have practiced for many years that at the end of the year into the next year they will, i will i will have to commit to something that cost me both to god and to the ministry every year without fail i do this i'm not talking of uh, 10 naira 20 naira something that even you you will stand and say lord i give you thanks between you and God. Why are you doing that? You are engaging the mystery of sacrifice and securing the year coming. Now, please don't do it if you don't have the revelation. This has nothing to do with trying to manipulate money. And this is a mistake that men of God make. When it comes to things like seeds and sacrifice, you see them expressing a lot of desperation. I, I always say this, every man of God's success is not based on the giving of members. It is based on his own obedience to the principles of the kingdom. Koinonia will only prosper to the degree to which we are complying with the precepts of the kingdom. Are we together? These five things, I promise you that when you do them, you will be ready for an amazing 2018. Number one, thanksgiving. Number two, review. That number two for me is one of the most important. You have to review. Don't just wait and say, ah, apostle, send us the prophetic word for next year. My body is shaking. I need to know what is the prophetic word. This is how a lot of people keep recycling carelessness again after again. And, 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 and then they again and again, and they find out that the year remains the same. Different words coming, but there's no progress in our lives. So go back, get a notebook. Don't just get a little piece of paper. It's a sign that you are not serious with your own destiny. Get a notebook and sit down and write these things out. Come up by the Spirit. One of the things I can guarantee you that will happen in your silence is that the Holy Spirit will speak to you. He will correct you. He will applaud you. He will rebuke you. He will encourage you. He will challenge you. Let the chastening of the Lord not be something that you resent. Whatever happens in that secret place, embrace it as the refiner's fire. It is going to be the key to your next level. Is that true? Praise God. So you do this. This is my first encouragement for us tonight. These five things. The Lord put it in my heart and I felt to share with us to help us maximize our time. Proverbs chapter 4. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're reading the first 10 verses. Proverbs chapter 4. Just to encourage us and then we'll pray. Proverbs chapter 4. Is it projected? Okay. Hear ye children the instructions of a father and attend to no understanding for i give you good doctrine forsake ye not my law solomon is teaching us here for i was my father's son tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother he taught me also and said unto me let thy heart retain my words keep my commandments and leave verse 5 get wisdom get understanding forget it not neither decline from the words of my mouth verse 6 forsake her not who is the heart wisdom understanding forsake her not and she shall preserve thee take note the benefits of embracing wisdom and understanding she shall preserve thee love her and she shall keep thee seven says wisdom is the principal thing therefore get wisdom and with all thy getting get understanding verse 8 says exalt her 
and she shall promote thee she shall bring thee to honor who will bring you wisdom and understanding not just wisdom wisdom and understanding will bring you to honor when thou dost embrace her we are reading to verse 10 verse 9 she shall give unto thy head an ornament of grace a crown of glory shall she deliver unto you verse 10 hear O my son and receive my sayings and the years of thy life shall be many from preservation to honor to longevity wisdom and understanding wisdom is the capacity to understand the mind of christ wisdom is the ability to communicate the scriptural solution concerning every issue of life the scriptural solution to every issue of life is called wisdom you are wise to the degree to which you comprehend the ability to profess scriptural solution there are cultural solutions to life's problems there are occultic solutions to life problems there are emotional solutions to life's problems none of them in themselves are able to provide lasting solutions but the wisdom of god the wisdom of god i have pursued the wisdom of god with my life because when i was exposed to my own folly and the fact that i am so limited and the consequences of foolishness the bible says he that works with the wise shall be wise himself but he said just being the companion of a fool your destruction is guaranteed if as a companion of a fool you are destroyed then what happens to the fool just being a friend to a foolish man allowing his foolish decisions to influence you it guarantees doom for you that means every fool has no hope foolishness is bankruptcy of the knowledge of god's principles it's not just acting foolishly the foolish action is a product of bankruptcy in your spirit and in your mind I like us to carefully examine the decisions in our lives. I want us to carefully examine the things that we do. The degree to which you have succeeded is a show of how you have manifested the wisdom of God. Every time results are not produced in your life is because there was a defaulting in the wisdom of God. It's an uncomfortable truth, but it's the secret to rising and pressing for wisdom. I am ever ready to be shown by God the areas in my life where I am bankrupt of the wisdom of God. It doesn't embarrass me. I want to know. I search for it like one who is looking for treasure. If you do not contend for wisdom, your life will be an unending circle of pain, an unending circle of regrets, an unending circle of many things. Most of us look at our lives this year and we can see several points in our lives where foolishness veered us off the path of glory and brought us into a lot of pain. Some of us lost destiny helpers. Some of us lost the gift of men. Is that true? Some of us lost opportunities. Some of us lost access. Several things. No wisdom. Some of us this year, we approached our parents wrongly. And right now there is a divide between us and our parents. Lack of wisdom. Some of us had zeal with no knowledge. And it brought a lot of trouble to our businesses. A lot of trouble to our ministries. Wisdom is very important. The Bible says it is the principal thing. And you see, the Bible says, I commend you to the word of God. It says he's able to make you wise. The word of God makes men wise. Just by focusing your attention on the word of God and imbibing the principles 
the modus operandi of the kingdom it makes you wise the word of god teaches you how to relate with difficult people the word of god teaches you how to speak and when to speak so that you don't get into trouble the word of god teaches you how to respond to unbelievers many of us come from families where there is a mixture of people who are both of the faith and not of the faith wisdom teaches you how to communicate wisdom teaches you that when you are angry be silent because every time you speak you will speak in the flesh there are many people who just obeying this principle would have saved them businesses worth millions of naira they uttered words that they are still paying for it today are we together our challenges dr mike Murdoch will say there is no money problem anywhere and i agree with him most of our challenges because you see we are victims of our understanding and most of the things we have executed in our lives are reflections of the limitations of our knowledge our wisdom our understanding guess what the bible says it says true wisdom a house is built then it says by understanding it is established the firmness of that house is a product of understanding it says true knowledge is a house filled with every pleasurable thing we must make up our minds that we are going to access the word of God not just as an instrument to heal us of the guilt of um, spirituality I would say for many people our study of the word is just to so that the devil does not plant any seed in us that we are backsliding but we are not learning anything this is the greatest book that will help your career and your business this is the greatest book that will help your marriage this is the greatest book the sufferings in our world today is because we have ignored the truths that are here we have read it like a religious book we have read it to preach we have read it to to carry out bible studies and prayer sessions but we have not read it for the purpose of accessing wisdom for the way of the lord is the way of wisdom choose the way of the Lord. listen there is no age you get to in life that guarantees that all your decisions will be flawlessly accurate this is the book that coordinates our success there is no educational height you get to that guarantees that your decision making process will be accurate even if you study psychology it is not enough to give you all the parameters that are needed in themselves to make wise decisions i have lost confidence in myself outside of the world it says thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path in this wicked world listen this ministry by the grace of God was built on this word. I have meticulously built my life on this word. I don't trust any other thing that is not this word. I bring you a proposition tonight as we round up this year. I want you to return to a place where you hold an unquenchable hunger and value for the word. Many of us pray but our lives are bankrupt of wisdom our decisions show the absence of the influence of the word it's very clear that we are not being governed by the word i can know how much you have imbibed the word by the excellency and the quality of your communication i'm not talking of linguistic excellence i'm talking of the wisdom that flows from your words i see your behavior I see how you disappoint your enemy's expectations and I know you have stayed with the world. When you become a victim of people's expectations, wait and see. He's going to shout at this person. Ah, you come and shout. Ah, you have given yourself cheap to life. The word of God is not coordinating you. Jesus disappointed the expectations of the people many times for instance when they brought to him the woman who was caught in adultery they expected he was going to rant because they were talking about the word of god you know every time satan wants to challenge you he uses scripture moses said this and jesus kept quiet wisdom for there is a time to speak 
and there is a time to be silent there are times where your loudest communication is in your silence your silence will answer more than any word for instance when responding to your critic your critic already knows the truth don't try to explain it's a waste of time you don't respond to critics by verbal communication you respond to critics by consistency consistency of your results is that true when I look at our lives and I see our lives surrounded by pride and arrogance it is because we have not seen the deception of pride the deception of pride is like a man climbing a ladder and you take the ladder away that's exactly what pride does I love the Word of God I stopped reading my Bible to finish it I stopped reading my Bible to crime scriptures I found out that it was truly a roadmap in this darkness darkness where there is deception how many of you have followed people's advices and their advices crashed you not because they were bad people they were just humans they advise you to beat your wife if she goes wrong say i tried it on my own wife look at how she's behaving now you tried it on your own wife and that's when you, you your prayer stopped being answered that's the first thing that started happening to you and many other bad things happened to you I can look at your life and know how much the word of God has prevailed by the quality of the results that you produce you see let me tell you something if I look at your life and I see you are dirty and tattered as simple as neatness I know you don't have respect for the word of God if the word of God can purge your spirit then your life will reflect it you cannot be growing in the world and you are dirty unkept looking like a thief all the time and say it does not matter no sir no sir the word of god will make you to buy iron because it will teach you that there is a way you appear before kings there is a way kings behave and the bible tells you that you have been made according to revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 we have been made unto god a kingdom of kings and priests so you speak like a king you act like a king is that true it is the word of God that is the antidote to these conflicts that our cultures create in our heads. Christian versus Hausa, Christian versus Yoruba, Christian versus Igbo. You don't know which one to embrace and which one to leave. I propose to you a culture that is above and superior to every other one. That any part of your culture that does not subscribe to the word of God, eject it immediately. The kingdom is a culture most of us our lives have been destroyed because of our our unfortunate loyalty to cultural tenants that are completely anti-christ so although uh, we are attempting again and again to be spiritual but the the thinkings that we have imbibed from culture continue to fight god in our lives i have no loyalty to anything that is not of God this is it this is my new culture scripture tells me that I've been called out of every tribe I'm not saying culture is bad in itself but trust me there are demonic and satanic areas there are certain aspects of cultures that are not seen in themselves but I tell you they are weights a weight is something that can provide an impedance it can stop your movement it says my yoke is easy and my burden is light so when you are carrying a weight that is destroying your life in our place we don't do this in our place women cannot talk who is this woman preaching i can't listen to her because in our which your place who invented it oh god is speaking i will listen in our place young people don't talk to old people even respectfully even under the anointing are you seeing that now it is important that we recalibrate our minds so that we begin to view life from the perspective of the kingdom they drove children from coming to jesus something about their culture taught them that and jesus said, ah, let the little children come to me 
and do not forbid them he said for for such that means these children roaming around are teaching you a lesson you are not learning that until you become like one of these not childish but childlike very malleable in your faith and understanding he says the kingdom is for such are you getting blessed tonight get wisdom get understanding make a conscious decision that in the name of the lord jesus although i was born in so 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 place i was born under so 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 condition by the grace of god my children will not live under that kind of condition the lord by his spirit will lift me it's not about nazareth it's not about where you come from it's about your ability to walk with the word of god and bring that transformation hallelujah by the grace of god i have made it a personal commitment as a minister that i will never create seditions or favoritism based on geographic factors never never you will never see me do that i love my people wonderful people love my region where i come from but by the grace of God, I've traveled to every one of the regions of this nation and they love me unreservedly because I do not and will never, never try to create any sense of superiority of one culture above another. I love everyone. The Bible says there is neither male nor female, neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free. We're all in Christ. So I cannot see, I can say IK is Igbo and say um, Pastor Alpha is from Kogi State, Promise is from Delta and I say you are my person, be careful. Those are the kinds of mindsets that rob us because your destiny helper will come as directed. It may not be from your place. Joseph of Arimathea. The Bible does not record that he was part of the disciples of Jesus. How about Simon of Cyrene? The people who played very major roles in the life of Jesus. Jesus was rejected by his own people. They ran away. Anna the prophetess. Simeon in the temple. Joseph of Arimathea. Look at the strange people who came and attended to him. Wisdom. There are ministries that have crashed into pieces because of lack of wisdom. They make it look like if you are this tribe, you are not welcome. If you are that tribe, you are not welcome. We must be careful because we are dealing with a global society. Part of the principles you learn when you study global leadership is that you must concentrate on the points of similarity. Concentrate on the points of similarity. Nobody will be comfortable in an atmosphere where their core values are being insulted simply because you are trying to demonstrate the superiority of another culture. So we unify ourselves as believers with one common culture. It's called the kingdom. The kingdom is God's culture where we allow the influence and the reign of Christ to permeate our lives regardless of our geographic differences ah. Elohim Adonai Thy kingdom come Thy will be done Is the Bible that teaches us how to be wise financially it says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children so when you see a young man spending as if he would not marry you see that living a fake and a foolish life that's a selfish man because he's not thinking about his children and his children's children the Bible says it the Bible says there is he that scattereth. Hear the wisdom of God. There is he that scattereth and increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. That means there is a relationship between greed and lack. 
the Bible establishes it so when there is lack in your life you check and you see that there is scripture is fulfilled in your life the Bible talks about tithing that there is a relationship between the opening of your heavens and your tithing regardless of whatever opinions are available scripture cannot be broken it is by these two immutable things God swore his word will not be broken heaven and earth will pass away but brothers and sisters men and their philosophies and their pride and their arrogance nations and kingdoms will rise and fall but the word of God remains consistent one of the greatest fears if I would say in my life is to find out that at the end of my life I believe they lie I wasted my time following a man following a philosophy and then at the end he will tell me I'm sorry me too I'm as confused as you I choose the Word of God that liveth and abideth forever this ministry is a tithing ministry I'm a tithing person there is no devil and no doctrine that will ever stop us that's why there is no amount of recession I say it with all humility by the grace of God Almighty that is capable of limiting me as a person and limiting the work of God for he said I will build my church and if you allow me build it I will build it in such a manner that the gates of hell will not prevail this is the wisdom of God I have learned from the wisdom of God that as a man of God your assignment is to lift up Jesus not yourself this is the secret to crowd you lift up yourself you pay for it he says and I if I be lifted the reward for lifting me is mysteriously I will draw all men not some men not some territories when I found this I said Lord I have no business building any empire it is about Jesus the King of Kings and the Lord of lords thank god for the honor but i'm so happy to let you know that the one who really deserves all the glory and all the honor is jesus the head of the church the builder of koinonia it came from the word i'm showing you things from the word i have found out in the word of god that when you honor the body of christ there are dimensions you enter it is it is the word of god that gave me that wisdom so i can insult a man because i do not like something about him yet he's carrying an anointing that can help me it is for this cause many are weak for this cause many are sick for this cause many do sleep there are many people who would have cheaply received miracles but the vessels that carry the anointing are not appealing to them the scripture says there is a treasure in earthen vessel he didn't tell you the vessel is golden he said the vessel is earthen so he can be angry like Elijah or temperous like Moses they still are anointed when I found out I don't have any problem with any man of God you never hear me open my mouth and tear down a man and his ministry because I believe that there is always something I can learn even if I cannot learn spirituality I can learn excellence I can learn leadership when you search for Jesus everywhere you will find him hmm. I learned from this scripture that as a man as he thinketh in his heart so is he so I stopped wasting my time packaging a reality that is not here gone are the days where people try to buy suit buy shoe with empty understanding and then their minds reduce their lives back have you seen territories like that they try to do physical things they have not educated the people in that environment then they make tap in six months they spoil the tap to look like the mindsets of those living in that environment no sensitization so I learned that the key to my lifting is not buying clothes buying shoe buying all these things to prove a point that I can wait with the Holy Spirit to reconstruct my understanding and that inevitably the things I so admire will helplessly run towards me oh my god and how how true this is one of the truest revelations I know in scripture the supernatural power of the transformed mind and its ability to effortlessly draw to your life the realities that are consistent with your understanding it is true are we together the wisdom of God tells you there is hope for a tree 
even it be cut short. In our society where we are, we are more than happy to conclude on people. You look at someone and say, this guy used to be an armed robber. There's no hope for him. But when you study the word of God, the Bible is full of people that God transformed their lives overnight. And my Bible says that rejected stone. Ha! Ah, that rejected stone. I'm speaking to someone in your family. And all the nonsense and rubbish that they say about people. There are people who started this year with their pride of spirituality and right now they are not they are almost not even born again because their pride humbled them they maintain their spiritual life by themselves but there are people who started this year saying lord if you are looking for any vessel can you use this drunkard and god said that's all i want come and right now as i speak to you they are in various stages around the world setting up place the kingdom of darkness because he uses the foolish things when you understand this you you will never run your mouth at anybody and conclude on people. You don't see a woman who is frying a car and look and say, oh dear, poor woman, because God can pick someone. You see, the word of God makes men wise. The way we speak sometimes shows that we have not read scripture. Whether it is a poor man, a rich man, I will hug you and greet you. I won't say you, you are this. No, no, no. Of course, I will give you honor. Because God, I have seen in my little life how God has transformed people overnight and made princes to be servants and servants to become princes. If the Baba of Joseph knew he was barbing the prime minister, he would have begged him and said, Sir, don't forget me, oh. There were people of Bas and John lifted simply because they dared to advise him while he was in prison. When he came out, he sent for them, created one committee and dropped them there. He said, quit before I change the committee. And he said it very openly, not anything in the hiding. I brought this person here because he was there for me. Wisdom. Wisdom teaches you to be there for people at their worst areas because they will never forget you. People will forget you when they, if, if, if I hold a banquet for plenty people, you hold that banquet as a king, so you forget everybody. But when someone comes to you in the cave of Adullam, you say, I will never forget you. Everybody ran away from me, but you stood here. One of the quickest way to be rich is find somebody rising. Find a vision rising. Be part of it with all diligence. That's a free ride to the wealthy place. I guarantee you. Some of our parents today know people that would have changed their life in a heartbeat. They are crying for rent. Whereas somebody that they would have helped with 50 naira 20 years ago would give them an estate today. The word of God making us wise. Making us wise. Making us wise. Making us wise. Hold your Bible in one minute. And I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, there is, there is wisdom in this scripture. There is wisdom in this scripture. There is wisdom in this scripture. I'm tired of foolishness in my life. Lord, I come to terms with the fact that my decisions are obviously showing a bankruptcy of the word of God. The quality of my decisions are a revelation that the wisdom of God is not at work in my life. The quality of my decisions, the quality of my results are questioning the efficacy of the word of God in my life. Are you praying? I'm not asking you whether you have been faithful with Bible study. I'm not asking you whether you have been faithful with your, your devotion or whatever it is. I am asking you, have you allowed the wisdom of God to influence your understanding? Do you live your life trading the mysteries of the kingdom? Or do you live your life guessing and hoping that at a point in your life things will change? It's risky to run your life by your own your own formula hallelujah sit down the wisdom of god come the wisdom of god teaches us how to relate with people is that true when when you study the wisdom of god the word of god you will know that whoever wants friends will not sit down and say call me text me be my friend that friendship is a harvest you have to sow the seed 
so if I sit down and I find out that I love God but there are no friends as a lady nobody likes me as a guy nobody likes me the secret is that something about your life is creating an environment that is pungent to friendship see that when you lack helpers in your life the Bible gives you a prescription when you lack helpers in your life I can tell you immediately there are things you are not doing among them there is no prophecy on your life because destiny helpers don't come on their own it is one aspect of your life that it is pure prophecy that calls them many of us we have used our words to program woes ladies ah, it is not for us we are not us we are the we are the um uh, what they call that thing we are the outcasts we are the ones who our parents cannot this leave it to these people and the bible says do not say before an angel i made a mistake we have programmed nonsense and rubbish a name god did not call you you have allowed yourself to be called it again and again you called yourself ugly there is nowhere in scripture where you are called ugly you called yourself irresponsible the word of god does not call you that way open my eyes help me believe i am what you say hallelujah so french the bible says cast not away your confidence confidence is not pride uh -uh. confidence is psychological stability that is on the strength of the truth you have found in scripture that's confidence stability that is based on the truth of god's word if you tell me apostle i i was passing across a shrine and i heard them talking about you that they will kill you tomorrow i'm going to sleep this night i won't wake up and do any special prayer through the night of god and it can't be joy it's a joke if you know the mysteries that keep this man standing yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you surround yourself with mysteries like chariots when the spirit of death knocks on your door three scriptures come out like like fire i shall not die but live and declare the works of the lord number two honor your father and your mother that your days may be long and that it shall be well with you number three i set before you life and death blessing and cursing i advise you and i chose it do you fight a man outside his will even God stands in the door of your heart and knocks why wouldn't Satan knock why wouldn't death knock if God is knocking to enter I don't know about you the Bible says a man who has no control over his spirit is like a city without war. anything that must enter my life if God knocks to enter nothing will enter on his own it's my revelation so when men say there is a casting down they allowed it somewhere for me when it knocks i say get back for me there is a lifting up see i'm not just entertaining you i'm showing you how the word of god makes a man wise it constructs your understanding the bible says he daily loads me with benefit i expect favor every day recycled after 24 hours it's not because i'm a preacher i expect it i found it i found thy word and i ate it it was a joy and a rejoicing the word was not written for preachers brothers and sisters it was written for those who can believe my mother started learning these principles and you would find that people will start calling take a bag of rice give your mother take this give your mother working for her she's not a preacher and it's not because she's my mother it works for anybody 
he said declare ye that he might be justified i will never say i am a failure no sir no sir no sir no sir just because there is no food in your room most believers will come guide this life self aluta continua victoria escata is, is a curse you are recite you are enchanting is the same thing as being given a charm in a herbalist shrine and you read it that's what we have been doing you come in and you see lack and insufficiency you declare while i look not at the things that are unseen but the things that are seen for the things that are seen are temporal subject to change but the things that are unseen i know that one day i will feed nations come on now you are going through times in your life you don't understand what is happening you don't give room to depression though he slay me yet will i trust him i know my redeemer lives Bible said Job did not curse God. The way we act is a revelation as to whether the word of God has worked in us. You go back and you meet friends. Ah, Omega, and then they say one kind of very devilish, poisonous, and vulgar word. You call a human being a dog, you call a human being. It used to be a joke, but now that you have the revelation. You lovingly say, no, I'm not a dog. I know exactly dogs in scripture are used to communicate Gentiles and people who are at the basest levels of life. I will not confess that. The Bible says he has made me a king and a priest. I remember when I was in secondary school, there's something they call Yabi. You know it. Where two people will sit down and look for very nasty expressions. Very vulgar descriptions of themselves the goal is for it to be funny so somebody usually there are a group of people who are like the referees i will say my own you'll be angry and say your own and then you know that's why people were not doing well notice people enter just one and by the time they finish writing exams they come out the only thing they come out with is a good certificate common sense gone health gone they are sick they have troubles God has not given me the spirit of fear. The Bible says, I shall not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day. In my world, there's nothing like ember months. He daily loads. This is the day the Lord has made. He didn't say the Lord and Satan, the Lord alone made that day. Satan too was waiting for God to make the day. It was God that made the day. I rejoice in it and I am glad. You will never see me frowning my face and you ask me why i said kai this world nigeria said no he said for with joy shall i draw i've taught you this frustrate satan by remaining joyful he said rejoice in the lord not in your results if you rejoice in your results the day you don't see it you will not rejoice again if you rejoice in your cgpa your job your new employment i rejoice in the lord eyes are on him regardless of the results my eyes are on him you pick a medical report and he looks at you he says the, the medical report says you have all kinds of lumps and all kinds of growth and the devil says that's it oh. in case you don't know the name is cancer it's just that it's forming come keep watching and you sit down and go online signs of cancer they say it starts like lumps hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you come and meet a maker and then he will confirm it to you he says it's true Go and drop that report and say lord if i die who will dance you are reducing the number of people who will praise you ask hezekiah isaiah went to him in chapter 38 and said hezekiah set your house in order hezekiah said nonsense i respect you you're a prophet of god but leave me and god shut the door hezekiah said god what did i hear you say remember your temple when you talk about the temple god listens oh lord your house oh and he said no 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 please isaiah go back go back go back i think it was a prayer department i was i was um yes on tuesday i was rounding up their session with them and i told them something i said as a worker in this ministry there are benefits that should be yours they are not they are not privileges they are rights as a worker 
there are certain things that should be yours the bible said a worker is worthy the word worthy there is deserving of his wages not just a worker in koinonia a worker in the house of god the closest simile to wages is salary that means that there should be something that leaves heaven for me you have gotten your salary for being a civil servant of Nigeria. Have you gotten your salary for being a worker in the house of God? Is God speaking to you? The way I speak, the way I act, the way I understand is a revelation. When you look at your child and beat your child and kick your child and say you are you are an idiot you are a stupid child i don't know why you and your foolish mother you are revealing something the kicking is a revelation it's a revelation that number one you don't know that children come from god number two you do not know that fatherhood is an office recognized in the realm of the spirit there is a priesthood office that fatherhood has the mother of jabez was angry she didn't know that motherhood is an office and out of her anger she named her child jabez every time jabez was to be good that office cried in the realm of the spirit and one day jabez was angry and said no i can't continue like this I can tell you more than half of Africans are carrying all kinds of tragedies that the office of father and mother provided out of anger. Your father looks at you and just says, look, it will not be well with you just because that time you were in the world and you stole his shoe or you stole a goat and went to go and sell it and he looked at you and in anger, he cursed you. He said, this is how you will be like a goat all through your life. And you would think it's a joke until you find out you put a goat side by side with the way you are behaving and you see that it's exactly the same true story i'm rounding up i know a gentleman that the mother cursed him and said until a rat stop stealing he will not stop stealing yes true story god is my witness he was a popular face that i knew this guy will come out of prison now as they are waving him sign it in two weeks he's coming back again that prophecy secured the spirit of theft in his life comfortable the only thing that can set him free is the anointing you see the reason why we speak over people yes you speak over people to superimpose and veto the ordinances that have been communicated upon their lives listen brothers and sisters i want you to understand that these are spiritual ordinances fatherhood and motherhood did not end with the old testament in the new testament a man treats his wife bad and the bible says his heavens will be closed this is why many fathers are going through hard life in Nigeria. I'm telling you this. This attitude of treating mothers and treating women as if they are a piece of rag. You are a father here. Please, I apologize. I have great respect for men. I'm one. I've been one all my life. So I, I don't in any way downplay men. But I want to be sincere with you. The way you treat your wife, not a woman, your wife, will determine whether your heavens be close or not so you can labor you finish insulting your wife call her stupid woman you and all your five useless children you are going for the business meeting they call you when you are almost there and say sir just go back it won't work again you say what do you mean it won't work i just prepared my paper the heavens you always know when the heavens are closed because a forest becomes a fruitful vine and becomes a wilderness depletion from as they say from grace to grass close heavens that's why the bible says until the spirit be poured upon us like rain from high then a wilderness will become a fruitful vine then a fruitful vine will be counted for a forest thank you hallelujah we're going to pray tonight and then i'm going to speak over your life I really believe in the power of prayer listen let me encourage you with these keys that i've shared with you 
I expect every wise young man whether you are staying with your parents or not or if if both of your parents have gone to be with the Lord you have spiritual parents you have all kinds of representatives if I were you do something for your earthly parents that will provoke a blessing from them as you are going home now don't just go as a big man big man no money close heavens go and meet your parents mommy I don't have so much money but I made pepper soup for you. I went round the city looking for bush meat that you like. I found it. Ah, oh, really? My daughter, you mean bush meat? Okay, God bless you. Ah, mommy, no. I came with this one specially. Please pray for me. What kept you and daddy for 50 years? Let that grace come. Your mother will look and say, kneel down. That's it. I can guarantee you that prayer is not noise. He said, go and make me venison that I may bless you. You don't bless without venison. The foolishness of young people. You stroll to anybody and they don't bless me. You think it works like that? Was, I, was it just because he was hungry? It's a principle. Honor your father and your mother. I'm telling you, this is some of us. This is what will break this joblessness, these problems. Some of us, you just need to go back home and say, mommy, I'm sorry. For five years, I have given you a lot of headache. You people don't even like seeing me. But I want to tell you that I got connected to a ministry and God has changed my life. I just want you to speak over my life. I don't have much, but I came with 100 Naira recharge card. They may have 10,000 Naira in their phone, but that 100 Naira is what will open you up. They will say, kneel down. Let me tell you, whether your father is a believer or not, if he speaks to you, it's an office. It will open your destiny. Are we together? Mm. You go back home and you see the people in your community loitering their life. Christmas is when people die from bike as a result of drinking. They learn how to ride bike during Christmas <laughs> until they die from it. And you just sit and say, look, three or four friends. Let's see what we can do. One day, small program somewhere at the back of one football field. Put one speaker and the rest organize something even if it's for the children instead of our little children dancing all this devilish dance that they start spoiling the hearts of these small children gather them let them even if it's biscuit and sopo or something you have done something noble for the kingdom and then take god on exodus chapter 23 verse 25 you shall obey and serve me and I will bless your bread and water. I will take sickness far away from you. There will not be barrenness in your life and your days I will prolong. Lord, I served you during this break. I come for the blessings that follow service. Are you ready to pray? Please rise up on your feet. Hello, him Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be. together and begin to pray in the spirit and seal the remaining part of this year seal the remaining part of this year go ahead and pray
Counsel that I should experience for 2017 and is still lagging in my life. The remaining days that we have, I think we should have about 20, maybe about 16 more days. Am I right? 16 days is too much for God to do a fearful miracle. Open your mouth and release your faith. Move, oh God. Move, oh God. In 16 days. You can still confirm your word concerning my life. <speaking in Spanish> serious prayer right now most of us are going back maybe to spend the break with our loved ones or around I'd like you to pray when Jonah entered a boat people started weeping and losing everything because one man in disobedience was in the boat he made the boat unusually heavy and was about to capsize but when the act of God entered the house of a man called Obed Edom without prayer in 90 days three months everything changed I like you to pray and say Lord I am a living tabernacle as I go home or wherever it is that I'll be going to I represent your possibilities I represent the act of God go ahead and pray I go home to smash the works of darkness every activity of divination every activity of darkness over my loved ones in the name of Jesus as I step my feet I decree and I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost the heavens are open unto me In the name of Jesus, I challenge every force. Hallelujah. Praise God. Don't be tired of praying. I want us to challenge three demonic forces over our family. Listen. One is the spirit of sickness and infirmity. Two, the spirit of poverty and hardship. Three, the spirit of death. Lift your voice and curse them. Lift your voice and curse them. In the name of Jesus, I represent the government of heaven over my life and my family. I command the spirit of death. Take your hands off my loved ones. There will be no sound of mourning. In the name of Jesus, pray. 
I come against necromancy. I come against manipulations of the consolations to destroy the life of any one of my loved ones. They are covered. I leave the standard of the blood. I leave the standard of the blood. Shake it, take it, take it, take it. I leave the standard of the blood. No death, not by accident, not by terrorism, not by plane crash. I cause sickness, I cause infirmity, I cause sickness. We cause cancer, we cause arthritis, we cause hepatitis, we cause every killer disease, every terminal disease. Take your hands of our loved ones. We cause the spirits of poverty and hardship, stealing resources from our loved ones, causing conflict in homes. favor that as I step out all through from now till January when I come back is going to be favor whether you have an uncle or not financial favor all kinds of open doors open your mouth and declare it create it I command favor in the name of Jesus I call for the help us for my family help us for my destiny Lord I receive I receive I receive all kinds of favor all kinds of favor favor men are rising men are rising in the name of Jesus favor hallelujah listen I want you to believe me we are rounding up but you see not many people in this life have truly encountered favor favor is an experience that happens once but the result continues without stop we are going to pray this prayer again listen the hardship in many of our families even salary will not cure it is that true there are some of us now if you get a job and you are giving your loved ones three three hundred thousand per month even after five years it will not solve the problems 15 people in the house only one person is working is earning twenty thousand that's a cost when i say favor i'm not saying look at your employer to give you one bag of rice or one of your rich uncle in america take your mind away from any man don't add faces. Your own is to just create with your words. Are you ready to pray? For me and for my family, Lord, surprise us. Surprise us before December 31st. Lord, do something that has not been done. A major dimension of favor. Pray, no matter what kind you have seen, provoke another. Provoke another. In the name of Jesus, I create it. I call it for. I call it for in my life. I call it for in this ministry. I call it for for my loved ones. I call it for strange favor between now and 31st December. Strange favor. 
Hallelujah. We'll soon round up. I'd like you to pray. Listen. One of the major reasons why there is trouble in our homes is because someone there has not given his life to Christ and therefore does not subscribe to the value system of the kingdom. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? It is terrible to have someone in a family that does is has not given his life to Christ or is not interested in being passionate especially if they have authority over you because they will force you to stay in their mode you pray for 30 minutes they say are you the first to be born again I have been born again I like you to pray two things Lord massive encounters I like you to pray for your loved ones that don't know Jesus. Lord, this is this is the season they must encounter Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. I pray for my brother. I pray for my sister. I pray for my father. I pray for my mother. I pray for my uncle. I pray for my step siblings. Pray, pray. Lord, we are tired of the challenges that their lack of encountering Christ is bringing to us financial troubles spiritual troubles they continue to become doorways and portals through which darkness comes in to destroy and invade give them an encounter give them visions give them dreams in the name of jesus break their pride oh god give them solid encounters encounters with your power change them change them change them some of them have vowed that they will never give their life to christ i like you to pray and say lord in your majesty prove them wrong prove them wrong hallelujah one last prayer and then we are done for tonight listen all these prayer points i'm giving you when you go back pray them especially this prayer of salvation i can tell you this with the little experience i have counseling families 90 percent of the problem is that there is someone who is comfortably a gateway for satan to destroy people notice how satan does it in every family he must search for somebody one bad boy one bad girl or maybe our fathers our mothers everyone tries to press into god you just hear that police are calling you go to the police station they will tell you they've caught your brother stealing a laptop the bill is four hundred thousand, and before you know it the money you have saved that's a devourer All this stealing you see young people do especially all these young guys steal something shamefully come and put their parents in trouble the money that should be the school fees of five people you have to take it and go and settle police is the devil what about the young boys that have not reached age of driving they smuggle out a car and go somewhere an expensive car they just bought with their friends get drunk and smash the car these are all the schemings of darkness. Many parents today are almost dying of depression because of the stubbornness of their children. A lady jumps the fence and disappears one week. Nobody has seen her. They are all afraid. They start contacting the police, paying money, and then she strolls in after eight days and says, why are you looking for me? It's the devil. A smart young gentleman about to graduate they will go and find him under the gutter because he went for a, a nonsense party Christmas party that is the birth of Jesus Christ drinks to stupor and the friends strip, strip him of phone and everything and they leave him on the ground they come and carry him in the morning arrest him in the police station and the whole family spends Christmas going to the station I like you to say the devil is a liar I'm, I'm showing you these are the things in in many families Satan does not want to see everybody rising you see a gentleman the only graduate and because he's a giver 
a wicked accident will happen and just destroy both of his legs or one kind of devilish sickness where there will be chemotherapy or something that is eating over 70 to 100 thousand per week in six months it has dried the finances of the family he said i will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower you have to be watchmen when you are at home don't see things happen and join everybody cry you know what to do go and lock yourself and say lord this cannot continue to be quarrel between father and mother quarrel between husband and wife all these bad bad things the devil brings during this season a time of joy and merriment all of a sudden that spirit comes into our families fire on the mountain everybody's living like a stranger don't you see that is an attack i'm telling you so that when you go back home everybody used to run away but now you are the one who will move and say no way i put an end to this evil in the name of jesus lift your hands let me speak over your life in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit as you return back you return in the power of the spirit in the name of jesus christ any name and any identity the devil has given your family that is a mockery to redemption i stand here in the name of jesus and i declare that within this one month may the lord change your story i pray from the depth of my heart for any individual and any family that is called Ichabod, that the glory has departed. I declare that because of your going back, let there be a restoration of glory. Let there be a restoration of honor. Let there be a restoration of dignity. Anyone here still trusting God for a job, I'm declaring you will not return next year without a job. In the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare if there is any manipulation of witchcraft for those of you who are traveling to the village and there are all kinds of warnings here and there either because your people are used to witchcraft I declare you will go and come back safely you will go and return safely in the name of Jesus hear me any strange spirit that enters your family during these times of love to scatter the families i declare in the name of jesus their end comes this season hallelujah there are families right now who are even waiting for you to come because even one chicken they cannot afford for christmas i call on my god i cry before the god of heaven that between now and next week let there be a miracle of supplies a miracle of supplies a miracle of supplies a miracle of supplies hallelujah i pray for those who are students do you know there are students that when they go home as soon as their parents see them their hearts begin to palpitate because of school fees in the name of jesus the kind of favor your parents have never seen i pray in the name of jesus let there be that kind of favor for them the kind of favor that will make your school fees look like pocket money in the name of jesus christ i pray for your spiritual life most people leave this environment and go back and return back as cold as whatever i pray for you you will return with even greater fire than you left with. whoever the devil is arranging in your life between now and january to destroy you i prophesy that your path will not cross in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ and for those of you who will be traveling, there are people who will be traveling from tomorrow, whether by air, whether on the road, I speak to your journey. I decree and declare, you know I'm robbers on the road. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will arrive safely and you will return back safely.
in the name of Jesus Christ I like you to wave your hands to Jesus wave your hands to Jesus father we give you all the praise after tonight will officially be closing for the year and um, we'll be resuming thank you we'll be resuming 19th 19th is the third Friday of January 2018 if you will be there I want you to clap for Jesus hallelujah praise the Lord very quickly before I take the altar call now we usually send the prophetic word please listen we are a ministry that is guided by prophecy and I usually send the prophetic word 6 p.m. on the 31st 6 p.m. on the 31st how many of you are here and you do not get SMS's from Koinonia let me see your hands okay this is what will happen um, protocol department sadly the public relations department have not started their work but for now protocol you please do their work let's see how we can um, if you have not been getting text messages from the ministry this is what I want you to do after the grace uh, where do we do it now okay at okay just somewhere here where Aaron is stretching his hands you can just come around there and you quickly write your name and your number and then we'll have it and upload it on the central ministry database so that you can receive text messages now when you receive the text message it is for you to incorporate it in your retreat and pray it of course when we come here we we'll open up the revelations but I believe with all my heart that next year will make this year look like child's play in the name of Jesus I believe that with all my heart praise the Lord hallelujah let's all stand you are here this is our last service an opportunity to connect you to Jesus please no moving around overflow one two three those following online you are here and um, you are saying apostle I've been hearing you preach but every time I want to come out there is a resistance this may be an opportunity you will not want to waste Jesus is calling you the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish but have the way God's life hallelujah you are here and you are saying man of God before we close for the year I want to tap into this triumph package I want to rededicate my life to Jesus probably at one time you made a decision for Jesus but for some reason you found out that things have just gone haywire in your life and you've been out of touch with God and you're saying can I join them you're most welcome these two categories of people I'm going to count one to five very quickly wherever you are this is our last night together for the year you do not want to miss this opportunity with Jesus wherever you are go ahead and come quickly overflow one two three make your way to the front very quickly God bless you Koinonia appreciate them people are coming come to Jesus the Bible says as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away win that war tonight win that war tonight make a decision for Jesus I believe there are still people outside if you're coming from overflow 3 please run very quickly run very quickly so that you can join those online you can follow us and say the prayer when I lead them to God bless you God bless you God bless you are there still people coming God bless you Jesus is still speaking to people God bless you young and old make your way make your way very quickly Apostle I'm not sure whether I'm born again I've always been in church join them very quickly if you are not sure it means you are not born again when the Titanic sank there were only two lists those who were lost and those who made it if you didn't make it you were lost there was no in between so join them you are not sure you are not sure of your relationship with Jesus join them very quickly join them very quickly you have been suspecting you are saved but you are not sure join them and be assured there is something called the assurance of salvation please very quickly let's save time our time is gone hallelujah thank you so much ladies and gentlemen I want you to lift your right hand very high to the heavens and I want you to pray this prayer you're not reciting a poem this is from it should be from the depth of your heart mean it say after me Lord Jesus please mean it loud Lord Jesus 
I believe in you that you are the son of God I believe you love me you died for me shed your blood for my sins tonight I receive you into my heart be my Lord be my Savior I declare according to your word that eternal life is mine from tonight and forever I belong to Jesus keep your hands lifted let me pray for you father in the name of Jesus I thank you for this ones we present to you trophies that attest to the death the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Lord I ask that you preserve them there is a grace that keeps men keep them in the name of Jesus Holy Spirit we commend them to your care your tutelage your mentorship you are the one who can make them expressions of true citizens of the kingdom and I pray that from tonight your ministry becomes effectual in their lives for those who are rededicating their lives to Jesus I pray for you the grace to stand the grace to be consistent the grace to be ever increasing is released upon you in Jesus name I declare your sins forgiven I declare that the life of God is at work in you you move forward ever and backward never in Jesus name amen and amen thank you so much for making this decision there's a lady waving her hands right now all of you please this way in concert I just want you to follow the lady and they will communicate a few details to you in the name of Jesus let's appreciate them going on here hallelujah praise the Lord now very quickly um, aside from those who are going out now aside from those who are going out in response to the altar call this is our last service for the year what a joy what an honor God has been faithful very 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 faithful um, we've not had any challenge all through this year it is something that is worth giving God thanks for. Indeed, he's proven that this is our year of triumph. And if this is your first time worshiping with us, what a joy um, to be at our last service for the year. Wherever you are, overflow one, two, three. May I request that you please make your way to the front.